The Trump jurors have been seated, but they're still awaiting five alternates. So they're not quite done. And it has already been wild. Two jurors who were already seated ended up getting dismissed a day later because one guy lied about I, I guess he had been charged with a criminal uh, with some kind of crime for tearing down conservative posters. At least that's how people have been framing it. What we do know is that apparently he did not disclose that he was charged with a crime previously related to some kind of political action. And another woman went home and immediately her friends and family were like, hey, that's you. You're one of the jurors. We can tell because your identifying information was published by the press. So the, the judge got super pissed and was like, why is the media putting out these people's information, exposing their identities? And uh, so those two uh, people ended up getting dismissed from the from the trial. So needless to say, they ended up getting another uh, another five, uh, another uh, seven the rest of the day, plus one alternate, and they still need five more. So we're not quite there. Trump leaves the trial with a big stack of articles from left to right wing publications, basically calling the whole trial bunk. So we're going to talk about that. Plus, Benny Johnson got robbed in Oakland while filming a story about people getting robbed in Oakland. You can't make this up. Benny, Benny posted a video where he's like, I got robbed in Oakland and he's eating a cheeseburger. And I'm like, ha ha, Benny. He went to In-N-Out and the prices were high. He got robbed. And then someone, there's a video of someone smashing out his, his SUV window. ALX was in the, in the car grabbing, like gr apparently grabbed the bag and ripped it away from the guy trying to rob them. This is, this is absolutely insane. And now people are saying that Oakland is like a third world country. And going back to Donald Trump, he said, we have basically become a third world country with how this trial is being run. So we'll talk about that. Plus, we've got a crazy story about a massive spike in suicides among young women over the past several years and how this is, uh, uh, I mean, Gen Z is getting, getting the worst of it. And then we have another big breaking story, a mass shooting thwarted here in Montgomery County. Mar this is crazy. This is Western Maryland, which is uh, uh, we're not we're not quite in Montgomery. It's right across the street. And there was a, a transgender, a biological female who was transgender, wanted to be famous, but the police uh, were able to stop this. So we'll talk about that as well. Before we get started, my friends, head over to castbrew.com. Why? Because we sponsor ourselves. The best coffee you'll ever have, Cast Brew Coffee. We got Appalachian Nights. That is our top seller. Re, uh, Rise with Roberto Jr. Not re -rise, Rise with Roberto Jr. That's our second best. And I, I hate to say it. But you know, the sales in Rise with Roberto Jr. slumped beneath Appalachian Nights right around the time he died. I think without that spirit and energy of Roberto Jr., the rooster, his sales have not been too good. So if you want to help out and reinvigorate the brand and the icon that is and was Roberto Jr., uh, buy some Rise with Roberto Jr. No, what actually happened is uh, we originally were pitching that as our main brew and people would buy Appalachian Nights sort of as an extra. And then people quickly got addicted to Appalachian Nights and it became our number one seller. So we're really grateful for that. When you buy from Cast Brew Coffee, what you're doing is you're helping us build our physical locations. We already have one in, uh, in Martinsburg, West Virginia, under, under construction. And the goal is to have a thousand plus all across the country. Why? We want physical spaces where someone's going to walk in and buy a cup of coffee and the TVs on the walls. They are playing shows like Steven Crowder, like Daily Wire, like Sticks X and Hammer like uh, Tim Cast IRL and, and many others, Viva Fry, for instance. And so this space that we have, this alternate media space, this up and coming new mainstream media will have space in the physical world and will become more prominent. Plus, it's a place for people to meet, hang out, network, share ideas. And that's the goal. So uh, right now, we're not taking anything out of the company. When you buy, all that money goes right back in so we can start this process. And we are in that pro private members only. Go to TimCast.com, click join us to become a member and support this show directly. Uh, and I'll give you another good reason. YouTube abruptly after three years took down our two biggest shows ever, claiming that we broke some arbitrary rules three years later. So they're effectively telling us we have to delete every single show ever. Well, we're not going to do that, but that means we could get banned at any moment. And if we do, we need to figure things out. But I'll tell you this. The only reason this show exists is because you guys become members. So if you do like the show, subscribe, go to TimCast.com, become a member. And that's how we basically fund the operation so we could use your support. You will get access to the Discord server, which is a chat room where you can have multiple chat rooms where you can hang out with like-minded individuals and watch our uncensored show Monday through Thursday at 8 p.m. It's a call-in show. It's a whole hour. So uh, you get you, you basically get a whole other podcast. So smash that like button, subscribe, and uh, share the show with your friends. That's important as well. Joining us tonight to talk about this and everything else is Danielle DeSouza. Hi. Yes, I'm Danielle D'Souza Gill. I'm excited to be here 
And um, I'm an author, and I wrote a book called The Choice, The Abortion Divide in America. I was on the advisory board of women for Trump, love Trump. And so, yeah, happy to be back. Right on. Thanks, thanks. for thanks for coming back. Chris Carr's hanging out. What's up? Chris Carr, the executive editor at SCNR.com. That's Scanner News. What's up, Ian? Robo dogs. <laughs> I had no, such a good time last night. didn't want to say it. <laughs> I had such a, it was a wonderful early time. Right? Yeah, last night was rock and roll. Let's do this again tonight. Good to see you, Danielle. Chris, I love you, man. Of course. Research. Yo, and I'm here as well. Let's get started, Tim. Here's the big news. From the Daily Mail, 12 jurors are selected in the Trump trial. Judge says the hush money case now has a full panel as the third day comes to a close. But the funny thing is, first, they still do need five alternates because in the event, and this does happen, that during the trial, uh, somebody has an emergency or, you know, just any kind of disrupting event, they're going to have to drop out. And that's when the alternate gets to come in and share their voice. The alternates have to be on the trial. Like, they have to be there for the full trial, watching everything in the event they are called upon to join the 12 jurors. They don't have that. One of the craziest things that we've seen so far, check this out. Post-millennial, second Trump juror dismissed after it was revealed he was arrested for anti-conservative vandalism. You are not going to convince me that these jurors are fair and honest. It is New York. It is something like 88% anti-Trump or some ridiculous number. These, these jurors likely are sitting there in the back of their mind saying, I can't wait to get Trump. And they're purposefully saying what they think they need to say to get on that jury, as evidenced by a guy who did not disclose he was arrested for anti-conservative vandalism. As for the other juror, the, there were two jurors who got booted. This nurse goes home. And immediately all her friends and family knew who she was. They were like, you're the juror. And she's like, how did you guys know this? And they're like, the media said a, a woman who lived in this part of town, who was a nurse for this long, all of these things. And instantly they figured out who you were. Mm. So she comes in and she goes, I cannot be impartial in this case. They dismiss her. I don't think the, the issue there was impartiality. I think the issue for her was, and maybe it was impartiality, but the issue was everyone's going to know who she is. Every juror in this case will, they're going to end up with their own Wikipedia pages. You do not escape the first criminal trial of a former president without landing yourselves in the history books. And I'm really concerned as, as to what this means for jurors, because I can't remember what trial it was. It was I don't know if it was Kyle Rittenhouse. Do you guys remember when the journalist stalked the jury? A journalist was waiting in a car for the, jur the jurors to get out and go into like, they, they get like brought out in secret so you can't see their faces. They get put in a bus and someone starts stalking the, the jury bus, trying to figure out who they were. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like in a week, the names of the jurors will be public information. No, no question. And this is going to be just absolute chaos. There's one juror that recused himself. Uh, Laura Loomer interviewed him today about six hours ago. His name was Mark Demuro. And he said, you know what? I've got cartoons that I'm like making in front of Trump on my Instagram. And if I stayed, they would have eventually uncovered it. So I'm just telling you now I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm partial. I can't do this. And so they let him go. And that was like, I think that was an honorable thing for the guy to do. If he's been making fun of Trump online, like mm -hmm. to, right. to not mm -hmm. step in. But I feel like at this point, it's like, if you're Trump, if you were literally president, that means everybody already knows, knows who you are. They already knew you. So there's no real way to actually have an impartial jury, even if you weren't posting cartoons online and you weren't like a professional pundit or artist. It's like you still probably have a bias about Trump because you think about him outside of the context of the actual trial, because the goal of the jurors to be unbiased is I'm just going to go off of what I hear in the courtroom only. Like, I'm not going to have other thoughts on this person. It's like you can't really do that if you're an American who's been voting or is even remotely plugged into anything going on it's like you can't be unbiased which is why i think this is just going to be a total persecution of trump taking place in new york but even if it wasn't in new york it's like even at that point everybody's going to have a view of trump yep mm -hmm. there's not a single person in the world who doesn't know that man is except for north sentinel island in fact i wouldn't be surprised if they finally land on north sentinel island find the north sentinelese people who have never had contact with humans before, and there's a statue of Trump on that island. <laughs> yeah, those are the guys that throw like spears at helicopters yeah, or drones yeah. and stuff. <laughs> yeah. I suppose there are other uncontacted tribes in like the Amazon it, or something. It's a fascinating yeah. point. How do you have an impartial jury when the president of the United States is on trial? Like, yeah. Everybody. It's like, for example, if you had a murder trial ex -president, ex -president. and the guy <laughs> who's on trial for murder, you tell them like, oh, he had an affair. It's like, you can't do that because then people are all of a sudden like their view of him is colored and they might be like, you know what? You're guilty because I don't like you because you had an affair it's like literally just that makes you an, an impartial juror so it's like in this case people have all kinds of thoughts about trump 
They're, yeah. Like he was literally president. So everybody knows who he is. He's part of history. Um, and I think the fact like you were saying about the the jurors, they may be followed. I mean, lo- the the left is willing to go after our Supreme Court. They're literally going to go out They're They're going after justices. So going after jurors who are normal people, that's that's definitely going to happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a really awful situation because when you consider the um, the makeup of New Yorkers, I mean, it's not even like that they have thoughts about Trump. Like, they're not even allowed to. Like, they've had thoughts implanted in their brain about Trump since 2015, and those thoughts have just festered there. And, we, I mean, if it's 88% Democrat, you know, you, you can anticipate what they're going to be. This is how you get the trial in the first place. I don't understand how you bring a trial against someone with no crime. I, 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 can I just kind of make that point again? We made it mm-hmm. every single night. But yep. for people who have just crawled out from under their rock where they <laughs> were living alongside Patrick Starr and they have no idea what's going on, the charge against Trump is that there is some secret undisclosed federal crime for which Trump is being charged, but no one's allowed to know about what it is. What? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I just came out from under the rock. What are you talking <laughs> yes. about? Yes. Welcome. Falsifying <laughs> business records is a misdemeanor. Trump has been charged with felony falsifying business records in furtherance of a secondary crime, a secondary crime which does not exist. Whoa. So it's like, I love it when cops are like, you're under arrest for resisting arrest. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on. How does that make sense? Hey, you said, hold on. You proved me right. <laughs> but they've done this. There have been people who have, who have been arrested for no other charge other than resisting arrest. And that seems a bit circular, as it were. But I suppose there's some argument about resisting arrest actually means like you were being detained for reasonable suspicion and you refused or something. I don't know, which doesn't seem to make sense. But Donald Trump is being charged because there is some secret undisclosed felony crime no one knows about. And because of that, they can now bring this other secondary uh, additional charge. Like the, the, the charge against him of falsifying records, felony falsifying records is an add on charge for a secondary crime that now there isn't one it just no yeah i don't think people believe any of it i mean at this point people know that trump is who he is and the left is going to find anything that they can it's like show me the man i'll show you the crime there's Mm -hmm. there's not actually any interest in what the crime even is or else everyone would would be talking about it if there was a real crime i think it was michael malice he tweeted that showing up in court is not some 4d chess move that people think it is you know, I, maybe I should actually try and pull up the tweet from from Michael Malice because uh, he makes a point. I think a lot of people. I, I think it was Michael. Let me let me make sure it was, and I'll see if I can find his tweet. He makes a point. I think a lot of people don't want to recognize a lot of Trump supporters. Let me see if I can actually find it. I thought I retweeted it. Um, maybe it wasn't Michael, but um, he makes this point that a lot of people think Trump going to. Uh, Going to court is like some 4D chess move where it's going to make him look better. I mentioned maybe his his legal team strategy is make him look like the martyr. But a lot of regular people who have no idea what's going on, who don't watch the news, are just being told Trump is a criminal over and over and over again. So you go to that suburban housewife who has no idea what's going on. It's going to be like, Trump's going to jail? Oh, no. And you're not going to be able to convince some of these people. It's the court of public opinion. The uh, Unfortunately, and it shouldn't be this way. Many people believe that if you are on trial, you're guilty. Well, you wouldn't be there if you were innocent. And that's the idea they're trying to implant as many people uh, heads as possible. And it is a disturbing concept because the ethos, I mean, one of the underpinnings of the ethos of the United States is you're innocent. Until you're proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt in a court of law, you're innocent. That's it. Mm -hmm. You're innocent. Yeah, here we go. Uh, Sorry, I got it right now. Michael Malice said, Trump being put on trial and forced to sit there isn't the 4D chess win for him. Some people think it is. Keep in mind, the average person was happy to engage in social distancing, then promptly forgot it ever happened when the next wave hit. Perfect. You've already got videos of people being like, Trump is now in criminal trial for fraud, for fraud, everybody. They don't care about the nuance of the trial. They don't read the stories. They don't listen to what Trump has to say about it. You've got all these legal scholars saying this is a bunk trial. Doesn't matter. These people are not going to see it. They're just going to be sitting there going, wow, Trump's Trump committed fraud. Hmm. There's these uh, misdemeanors. As far as I can tell, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's like 33 of them. And it's well, because 34, all for one reason. Yeah. And it's like he mm-hmm. sent 34 copies of the same thing or something. So they're like, oh, 34 <laughs> charges. Roughly. It was re- re- retainer payments to his lawyer. 34 Regular, different. Regularly scheduled retainer payments. And so they turned it into 34 counts of falsifying business records. And they would have all been misdemeanors if there wasn't another felony in the in the shadows. Oh, well, let's let's ramp it up. Not only are would this typically be a misdemeanor, but 
the FEC and the DOJ looked at the exact thing and said, there's no crime at all. Yeah. And I, so Bragg went, eh, there's a crime here. Unfortunately for him at the state level, it's a misdemeanor. So he said, yeah, but there's another crime. What's the other crime? I don't know. There is you this, go. Is this unprecedented? Has this yes. ever happened before? Unprecedented. And well, I'm, I'm sure there have been many malicious prosecutions throughout American history. But the, I, the, the thing that bothers me the most is Trump getting on his knees. Some local DA files a non-statutory criminal charge against Trump. The judge laughs and says, let's roll, baby. And Trump goes, OK, shows up, gets on his knees and says, tell me what to do, judge, and I'll do it. That's that's crazy to me. Bragg and New York crossed the Rubicon and Trump said, fine. You know, the thing about Don is he's he is lawful. He, he yep. respects law and he's willing to play ball with the law. And like, if you're playing against dirty, poly, like a dirty law, legal no, no, system, but, that's, that's a tough thing to do is to be le the law. I, I agree, but this is not law. He's trying you, to, you, yeah. you, like, you cannot do like wage a civil war on them. You know, like basically they're going to, they're, they're already saying Trump is a dictator. No, no. He's taking over. He, but he, he's appearing in court because he's obeying the law. He's, he's, he's not, not obeying the law. There's no law. This is not on the books. What they're doing to Trump does not exist in statutory law. They've made it up. They declared a civil war on Trump and Trump said, I'll do whatever you say. But what do you think he should do? He should be. I mean, so he's running Trump, for president. I mean, he's so, speaking so, out. He's trying to fight against the weaponized the weaponized government that's fighting him, that's fighting January 6th, that's so, fighting so, regular Americans. So the issue like, is. He's doing everything he can. New York, uh, Bragg, this is a Manhattan DA, files what is obviously a false criminal charge with support from establishment po politicians. Trump even accuses Biden of being involved, calls it a Biden case. The Democrats have crossed the Rubicon. They have now filed a criminal charge. Well, not now. They filed a criminal charge against Trump a while ago for something that doesn't exist on the books. And they claim there is a nebulous, vague, undisclosed secondary crime that is not has not been filed. So they're using an add on charge for an underlying crime that doesn't exist. This is non statutorial criminal charge. Donald Trump, it's. And then he says, OK, I guess. I imagine Donald Trump in his home in Mar-a-Lago and NYPD for no reason show up at his house, tie him up, throw him in the back of a van and drive him to New York. We'd call that kidnapping. Only problem here is Donald Trump said, you know, I agree. I'll, I'll actually I will. I will show up. I do agree with what you're doing. But I don't think he does agree with what they're doing. Well, he can say I it, but that, he's, I think he's, you're right. There is no basis for it. That's mm -hmm. true. And they they have crossed the Rubicon. But I think that what Trump is also spotlighting is showing that this what's happening to him is what's happening to normal people. If a clown showed up to your house and told you that they had a clown warrant for your arrest, would you get in the back of their white panel van? Well, it's the government. So people. It's people, the state people government get, of New York. We think of Trump, though, as this like superhero. He's above the law, but but he he's a person. This is not the law. I, I agree it's not the law because they're they're they've weaponized like like Letitia James ran and said, I'm running because I'm, I'm going to put Trump away. And Trump just keeps you know? getting on his knees. So, every it, so it's time. totally it's totally it's, it's totally unfair. It's awful. But I don't think I don't think he is. I think he's fighting back. And I think that when he wins in November, it's going to show people that them doing this to him, them doing this to normal people, it just backfires on them. This, this kind of confirms uh, a component of his uh, short-sighted judgment that he exercised in office when you think about it, because he got rolled by the swamp creatures that he put in his administration, and now he's getting rolled by clown people that call themselves, uh, you know, government court officials. Yep. So he just, he's good at getting rolled, amazingly, despite the fact that he's so, kind of a bull. He's good at getting rolled. Well, well, let's talk about the judge's daughter. What's her official position? I, I want to be very specific, so I'm, I'm wondering if you guys can, before I even say it. Well, I've heard that she's involved with some sort of Biden campaigning or something. That was it's vaguely. She has clients memory. who have raised over a hundred million dollars off of this trial. There have there was a judge on CNN who said there, it's a clear case for recusal of the judge. What we are dealing with is, I'll put it this way: if a guy who works for the NYPD robbed a bodega, we would not call it the law. If a guy working for the NY, if, if an NYPD officer walks into a bodega and says, by order of the law, empty your register and put it in my bag. 
We wouldn't go, oh, look, that, cl- that, look that clerk is not bodega. above the law. That clerk is not above the law. He better give that cop his money. But the bodega, the guy who went in there where Trump just visited the owner, the guy, the, the evil guy went in there. He's like going to kill them. The other guy takes out his weapon. You know, I'm saying, obviously, I'm on the side of the guy who's defending himself. Right. But New York is against that guy. Does that yeah. mean that it's the law or what's not the law? Obviously, that's totally wrong. We, we should support someone defending themselves. But in a place like New York that's just completely been taken over by liberals, you have to you have to just realize that that's like the evil of New York. And you, you can't I live think... there anymore. You can't be there. I mean, I, I'm glad that that guy ended up OK. But so many people, I mean, they're they're under that kind of tyranny. Trump should have stayed in Florida. I under I, I, I suppose this other, other aligned states with New York would then come after him, but he can't campaign now anyway. And uh, I, I suppose it's easy for me to say I have no idea what his legal strategy is or what's happening behind the scenes. I believe there's a strong possibility. His lawyer said this is going to boost your numbers. It happens every single time. It's going to put you on TV. You are going to be front and center. It's going to get you press. You could not buy. Roll with it. Mm-hmm. Perhaps. Morally, I think. Trump should have said, when you file a a criminal case against me, I will gladly answer it. But you haven't. So I'll be here in Florida. Let me know when you have an underlying crime for your felony. And I will gladly have I will gladly answer it for the time being. No, you can't just make this stuff up. And that would require New York to negotiate with Florida or through the federal government to figure out how they could actually extradite Trump. It would put weight on the federal government and Florida to agree with New York that they can file an upgraded charge without an underlying crime. I don't know that Ron DeSantis would be able to to manage that political situation in Florida. He'd have no choice but to say, absolutely not. You can't do this. We, I, I don't understand how you even have the Rolling Stone. Trump was laughing about this. He comes out of the courtroom and he's like, Rolling Stone says they can't win. It's remarkable. When you have even the Rolling Stone, which is like crackpot woke uh, occult nonsense saying this is not there's no case. It's patently obvious to anybody. What other state is going to want to intervene on the beh- on behalf of New York's fake case? My concern now is that with the fraudulent manufactured criminal case against Trump by him going to court and saying, OK, I guess he has just told every single person in America, not just that they could do it to you, but that if they do obey, if they make up fake charges against you, even a president must go. And so must you. So now the government just has what Trump has signaled. If the government fabricates fake non statutory criminal charges against you, that's too bad for you. I guess you're going to jail instead no, of saying, no, I don't think he's going to jail. I think he's going there to show this is what has happened to our government. It's become weaponized against people like like Trump and it's become weaponized against Trump himself. And I think he's going to be vindicated and people are going to see that, like you said, there is no claim. There is no evidence. There's there's nothing against him. And what? all of these people who are going to be voting for Trump, maybe people who are like, wow, I see how bad the country's getting. I don't know if I would have voted for him otherwise. And even these suburban women, like you mentioned, I mean, yeah, maybe maybe they're kind of put off by this all happening. And that's kind of an ugly thing that's happening. But at the same time, it's a wake up call to say, whoa, like this is what's happened to our country. Why do you think Trump will be vindicated? I think he's going to be vindicated because as soon as people look into it, as soon as people see this, people will see that there's no evidence. There's you, no there's no crime. It's trumped up charges. You think that New York liberals? No, not New York liberals. I'm saying the well, spotlight who do you think the jury is? that's put on. I think the jury is going to be totally biased. The jury's liberals. And they're going to quit Trump even though they're biased? No, I think that, they, that those people are probably going to be going into this. I mean, jurors are still getting removed. They're 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 totally biased. So Trump's going to get convicted. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I just think that the people who are going in there don't know the evidence and they're not going to be cr- critically thinking about this. They're going in there with their preconceived notions of Trump. Do you I, think that the prosecution might just fumble the case and just fail to convince, a, you know, died in the wool New York City liberals that Trump is innocent? I mean, do you think that they're just going to like screw up the case to the extent that the jury is going to acquit him? Do you think that's possible? I think anything is possible. I mean, honestly, I I think that the jurors who are in there are probably really dumb and probably have no sense of even what his defense would say. Who knows? Maybe his defense would be really good. And some of them would think, wow, I've never heard this in my life because I live in an echo chamber and I live in New York and all I hear is that Trump is evil. So maybe some of them would 
would have a mind change. Maybe one of them would have a mind change. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm going to rely on it because I do think New York is totally corrupt. But that's the best case scenario, essentially. Yeah. I think if yeah. someone offered you a bet of, you know, 100 to 10, you give me 10 bucks. If Trump is convicted, I'll pay you $100. Or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, the way around. If someone said, you, you wager 100 bucks, and if Trump is convicted, I'll give you 10, that's a good bet. 10 to 1. Or 1 to 10, so I guess. So you think he's going to jail? Well, I don't know if they give him jail, but I certainly think after everything the deep state has done, the idea that this time, this is the hard line for them, they'll just stop here. Is They're not going to stop. They're not going to choose to stop for sure. Why Why would people who live in New York, 88 to 90 percent anti-Trump, people who have who vote to defund the police? I get there's a lot of people in New York who are upset about what's going on, but they keep voting for the same thing. Yeah. But that's why he's fighting for a presidential immunity. You right. know, it's like which, this, is a, sham, this which, is a sham trial, which presidential immunity has nothing to do with this case. So why would. And, and OK, let's 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 operate outside of the liberal bias. Knowing that Antifa has killed, shot people, taken over uh, cities, numerous cities, burned buildings to the ground, mercilessly beaten people in the streets on hundreds, if not thousands of occasions. Uh, in the Chauvin trial, the jurors had to be escorted by armed, he heavily armed police because of the riots happening outside. When this one juror came home and found out that people knew who she was already, she said, I'm out. So let's say these are just normies. And they're like, maybe could be impartial. You still have to connect with the fact that they're they're sitting there with their friends saying, you know, they'll kill you, right? Like, no matter what you do, no matter what you do, you live in New York. Antifa is going to come and they're going to burn your house down. They're going to smash your cars if they find out you acquitted Donald Trump. These people are going to convict. They're going to convict because the only way to survive in New York is to convict him. If they convicted him, you're saying you don't think he'd get in jail. So let's say he. Well, I don't know if he gets jail. He could. What's the worst? I, but what if would they happen did if he was convicted, that, I think uh, I think ten years is the max. I could be ten years. I could be wrong. Uh, uh, legal analysts, according to some corporate press, said that four years probation is like a first offense typically. So felony falsifying business. Basically, what they're claiming is there that felony f felony falsifying business records. In, uh, requires an underlying secondary crime. That is Trump to conceal a crime falsified business records. Well, none of this is true. Trump did not falsify business records. That's not even proven. And there is no underlying crime. Their argument is effectively that Trump is running some kind of like mafioso type thing. And he lied about these legal records to cover up some other crime that doesn't exist. But taking a step back from that court, from those people, I feel like in the court of public opinion in the country, if he is reelected that means people don't care about this they don't care that he's on trial and they don't care if he's found guilty and they don't care if there are a bunch of biased jurors i mean we care to the extent that we hate that it's happening and we hate that there's a persecution of our president but i don't think that normal people in america are going to look at it and think oh wow you know this means that i actually do think that trump is now a criminal it's like you either already think certain things about trump or you don't then and what, I then, think most people aren't, aren't going to look at it that way, even if he were found guilty, like you're saying. Then all they're doing is they're tying up his money and preventing him from campaigning. That's They'll, what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to slow him down. And he will be convicted. And then what they, they order him to re remain in New York. You can't leave without a permission. You've been convicted. You get convicted of a felony. If Trump is convicted of a felony, he can't leave the country. He can't he can't have a gun. He can't leave the country. It affects his voting rights. This is a felony charge. I mean, this, the fact this that they're sentence. even thinking of doing this is evil. It's literal yep. persecution of our president. And even if you're not conservative, this is downright evil. And it shouldn't be happening to people who are liberal. It shouldn't be happening to people who are conservative either. But um, I think it would just be a wake up call to most people in the country. Like if, if Trump is hindered from campaigning as he normally would, his money is getting tied up. He can't <clears throat> travel like you're saying. And if he still wins, then I think that just shows how much power Trump has. If he still wins, this has been the case now. How, how long has had, had these indictments going? It's like a year, right? Yep. You've got it's been nonstop, right? So the, nothing's changed. This this criminal trial doesn't change. They've already drained him of his resources, bragged about it on Twitter and on the news and in interviews, launched more and more criminal trials against him. In the in the uh, Georgia case, you actually have an uh, admission of impropriety with the DA and the prosecutor, and the judge says, "Who cares? 
let it go anyway. No problem. It's it's obvious to everyone and has been for a long time. And Trump is up in the polls by what, one or two points? But usually the polls show that him lower than what he normally yeah. would be. So but it's if, a, it's if, a good this was place a, to be. If this was an awakening, you'd think the jurors would be like, I'm shocked at how insane this has, be, has become. But instead, they're like, yeah, I posted I posted Trump should be in jail on, on my on my social media. These are the they, they, they had to dismiss 50 of 96 jurors, which is insane because they were all like, we hate Trump. They, I, I don't see a reality in which in this case, in the Georgia case, in the doc, the federal in, in the documents case out of Florida, Trump, I, I don't see a reality in which they have gone this far with everything they're doing. And then finally just stops and they go, wait, guys, us in the deep state, we've gone too far. We cannot put Trump in jail. No, they're going to be like, we will do literally anything by any means necessary. They will. But I think that normal people seeing it would think that this has gone way too far. And this is but, insane. But, 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 but I don't I don't know why. I mean, maybe. But we're not we're, I, we're not seeing that. What we're seeing is, I suppose we can say, let's wait a week because even Rolling Stone said this is like likely not going to fly. But you've got prominent liberals cheering for this. I guarantee you go to the Krasensteins uh, uh, social media and they're celebrating this saying Trump should oh, be. Oh, yeah. They all have Trump derangement syndrome. But so none of these people are waking up. None, no, none, none they're of these not waking up. We don't need prominent liberals with large X followings to wake up because that convincing those people to to wake up is is basically impossible. But I think as far as normal people who see this and see that this is a, a persecution of Trump, I mean, it's it's very clear that the left has just spent years being obsessed with taking down Trump. And no matter what they do, it's not really working. I I, 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 I don't know that this matters. Like that, that you know, that's why I brought up Michael Malice's post uh, that it's not the uh, 4D chess win people think it is. All that matters for most people is immigration and economics. All, can they afford rent? Can they afford their bills? They don't really care if Trump is or isn't a criminal. The far left are going to say Trump's a criminal. The The right is going to say Trump is not. Democrats are going to say he is. Republicans are going to say he's not. And what matters is when it comes to the issue of economics and, and immigration, the two biggest issues, Trump is nowhere to be seen. Why? He can't campaign. So I, I think it's a strong possibility. He gets convicted. They say, Trump, you've got a fraud case. Can, you're confirmed liable for fraud. This is not a man who should get a slap on the wrist. And we'll see how they want it, how, how far they want to go. But they could go as far as we are nice people. We'll be reasonable because we believe in justice. So Trump, one year probation. And you can't leave the state without permission from a judge. We'll see you at Trump Tower. And that's it. He does no more campaigning. Well, his campaigning has always been really strong. He's always been able to get a ton of people at rallies. But just throwing out the thought, even if he wasn't able to do those anymore because he's been put on a leash by these cases, um, I still think the people who would have shown up to the rallies would have been there. Like those people haven't gone anywhere. Yeah. Like those voters haven't disappeared. And everyone who's seeing what's happening at the border, who's seeing immigration, who's seeing what's happened to the economy, like those people still exist. So even if Trump isn't coming to their backyard or coming to the state that they're in, I think that they would still be able to piece two and two together. Yeah, he doesn't really need to campaign. He's already got it in the bag. He's the incumbent. He's already been the president. Everyone knows him. He's he not just, the incumbent. Technically not, but he basically is in a right. lot of ways. It, we, we have we have two, like we, we have an incumbent and a, and a semi-incumbent. Yeah, basically. yeah. And so he could do X videos. Like he could whip back up his X account and go hard in the paint from Trump Tower and get another 7.5 7 million followers in the next six months. And, uh, and that, that would be an, uh, an effective campaign strategy. I think in 50 years, they will write about this criminal trial as the crossing of the Rubicon. The Democrats created a false criminal trial with fake, not, with a non-statutory criminal charge against Trump, and they all rallied behind it. The judicial system has ceased to exist. That's it. Whether, whether Trump agrees with it or not, whether he shows up to trial or not, the big test is going to be if Trump shows up to the SCOTUS oral arguments. If Trump does not, then he's lost. What would that be? The, the presidential immunity oral arguments, I believe, are next week. Uh, I could be wrong. I think it's Wednesday. This is to dis to to hear for the Supreme Court to answer 
whether or not a president can be criminally charged for actions they took as president as per their official duties as president. I believe it's fairly obvious. Of course, you can't criminally charge a president for the actions of the official duties, you know, for, for a president. The Democrats and MSNBC and all that are arguing that Trump is claiming he's immune from all criminal prosecution, period. Trump's legal team is not arguing that. They're arguing if a president, you know, walks on a Fifth Avenue and shoots somebody, that's a criminal act. You go to jail. Doesn't matter if they're president or otherwise. If a president signs off on a drone strike because he's given intel by the CIA, you cannot criminally charge him for that unless he is impeached first. He has to be impeached, convicted, then criminal charges can be brought about. Congress has to agree and confirm the president and his official duties committed an infraction. That is that is a high crime and misdemeanor worthy of him being removed from office and is also criminal. That's the argument. Trump doesn't literally need to be at the oral, oral arguments. His lawyers are there. But I believe it is a moral imperative for the former president who is who is standing for this uh, case to defend the office of the executive branch by being at the Supreme Court, standing face to face with those justices, as his legal team argues, you cannot criminally charge a president for actions they took as per their official duties. This judge told Trump he cannot do that. He but must he was just saying that if he went to the New York one, that's him kind of like giving in. That's him giving a yes. signal that I'm like weak or something. I don't think so. I, I don't think it's weak at all. But you were kind of seeming like you were saying that about the other case. The Supreme Court hearing is an argument between the executive branch and I, I, I suppose the, the, the Democrats in certain states in the federal government, the DOJ, current administration. Trump literally should be at the Supreme Court. So the. Third branch I think he of, should too. I think so the, he should be there. But I, but I right. feel like he should, if he's facing that, if, he, if he's facing the, the crime accusations in New York and he's facing this at the Supreme Court, I feel like both of those is a show of strength. So Trump has a choice. He can stand up for the office of the presidency in front of the Supreme Court, or uh, he can go to this fake criminal trial in New York City. If Trump the question for Trump now is, what is more important, the fabric of this nation and the office of the presidency or going to jail for 30 days? If Trump goes to the Supreme Court, he will be held in contempt and likely jailed. They threaten. Maybe they don't actually do it. What is scarier to Trump? The fabric of this nation being torn to shreds and the office of the presidency presidency effectively being removed or going to jail for 30 days. That's his choice. When we brought it up on the show and when, when the story broke, everybody said, yeah, Trump's going to skip SCOTUS. He's going to say, I, you know, I don't need to be there. My lawyers will be there. It'll be fine. I don't want to go to jail. I don't know. I, I feel like I could see him going. I'd love to see I him go. I could see him going and maybe he would go to jail. Maybe he would be in the handcuffs. You said maybe some people think that would be a big PR thing. I don't know. But I think that he he will defend the presidency. Well, I'm curious as to what you guys think if you want to chat, um, because we did have Triton 54 the other day. Sa he said that if Donald Trump skips the SCOTUS hearing, he won't vote for him because that shows that Trump cares more about complaining about corruption as opposed to actually fighting it. I would. Ah, that's an interesting conundrum. It is important that we defend the office. That is a big important thing. It's not about Trump. This is about the office of the presidency and what the president can and can't do. That's at least what the Supreme Court's dealing with right now. I don't know, man. Would he have gone if it was just? Yes, he would have gone. For well, sure. he, he had he had said for the longest time he will he will be at the oral arguments for his presidential immunity, and the judge just said no. He actually requested we'd like to be at the oral arguments, and the judge said no. He said, "I know that your client uh, a, a case before the Supreme Court is important, but the New York Supreme Court is important too, and you are a a, a criminal defendant in this case, and you will not attend that." So what's scarier, a state? A state court judge wagging his finger over what is clearly a fake criminal charge with no underlying crime. Telling you you cannot go to one of the most important oral arguments in the history of this country. Like, it's a no brainer. Trump has to go to the Supreme Court and that risks contempt. And this is a big moment for him. Will he actually defy the judge? I think it's actually fairly easy because I, 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 my attitude would be like, you know, with all due respect, Your Honor, you do not trump the Supreme Court and this country is more important. And I'd say I'd, I'd say it straight to the cameras. I'd say to everybody, 
If this judge thinks that his state and his singular criminal trial matters more than the history of this country, I'd like to see him announce that to the world. I will be at the Supreme Court oral arguments. He can do what he does after that. That's his purview. And then if they want to arrest Trump, let the headlines ring. Donald Trump arrested for contempt of court for having attended the Supreme Court oral arguments on presidential immunity instead of attending a criminal trial. Let it be that. Let them write about it on Wikipedia or wherever they want to write about it. But th that's why I asked if what people thought, because uh, like I mentioned, Triton 54 the other day, Super Chatted saying, if Trump skips the oral arguments, he will not vote for him. I'm curious if other people feel that way or if it's just people are going to vote for Trump because nobody's going to vote for Biden. Yeah, none you know of this I mean, stuff. I feel like he should go. I, I agree with you. But if he's not there, I don't see why that's such a big game changer. Why he's not in the terms Supreme Court? of the person writing that they, they're not going to vote for Trump anymore unless he's in contempt of the court and, and goes to Supreme Court. Right. If, if Trump does not attend the Supreme Court oral arguments because a state court judge told him not to, what the super chatter said was it shows Trump's more concerned with like himself. He's, he's less concerned with this country than himself. And he's, he said it was a signal that the second term will be the same as the first, that Trump's not actually going to fire people. He's not actually going to start. He's not going to appoint someone to the DOJ to deal with the corruption. It's going to be Trump getting in the presidency and just saying, please leave me alone. I don't want to go to jail. I think that's the accurate prediction. I really do. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's not going to go to the Supreme Court if the judge won't allow him. There's no chance. It shows tremendous weakness. Yep. Fear of a lesser of a lesser court, which is insane. Perceived fear right. of, a, of a kangaroo court. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Gotcha. But we'll see. I mean, even missing his son's graduation is crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, that's wild. Yeah. I mean, if he if he's in contempt of court, though, it's like, you were saying what a, what an issue it is if his campaign, he's not able to do these events, he's not able to do things like he normally would. I mean, that would obviously make it a lot more difficult. So I also feel like I could see why he wouldn't go. So I don't know if it's that, oh, he's all talk, no action if he why doesn't wouldn't he go. go. Why wouldn't he go to the Supreme Court? Because like you were saying, it's tying his hands. It's making Going it so that he's not- Going to the Supreme not, Court? You were saying if he goes to the Supreme Court, it's in contempt of the, the judge from New York. No, and no, then, no. The Supreme Court is the is the job. Donald Trump is asking us to believe that when he's elected, he will do things like stand up for us at the Supreme Court. If he says, unless a, a state court judge tells me I can't do it, then I'm supposed to believe that when he becomes president, we're actually getting anything done this time. Look, his first term was great. I didn't vote for him in 2016. But then when I saw the foreign policy stuff and the anti you know, ESG stuff, I was like, OK, this is the clear no brainer. A timeline for withdrawal from Afghanistan, getting trying to get our troops out of Syria, the Abraham Accords, all these peace agreements, peace uh, trying uh, crossing the DMZ into North Carolina. Like, this is this is amazing. At the same time, escalation of drone drone strikes, a lack of transparency in drone strikes. I get all that commando raids in Yemen, fifty nine tomahawks into Syria. There were bad things too. Bringing John Bolton on, he made a lot of mistakes with his personnel choices. But for a while, we talked about how Trump's going to want revenge. He's going to want retribution. And he even said, I will be your retribution. So now the concern is, obviously, between Biden and Trump, Trump's the obvious choice because he's the best president of my lifetime. But there were a lot of mistakes made during the first term where they cemented, uh, they cemented his, his feet and dropped him in the ocean and he had to fight against that. We are hoping that this time around, the gloves come off. Mm -hmm. He appoints someone like Cash Patel as AG or head of the FBI. If Trump is so scared of a judge in New York that he would skip the Supreme Court oral arguments on presidential immunity. I don't believe that a second term is going to be anything substantive at all. Okay, I don't agree. I, th it's still I, better than I think Biden. he should go. I agree with you there. But if he doesn't go, I don't think we can be saying, hey, Trump, if you don't do this one specific thing, we're done with you. If you don't do this one specific I'm thing, not we're saying done with that. you. No, no, I'm, like, I'm just making the counter argument and saying that if you are, let's say you're a pro-lifer and you're like, I don't know about Trump anymore because he said this, or you're saying, I really want the gloves to come off. You have to go to this court hearing. If you don't go to the court hearing, I don't want to vote for you anymore. If, you know, if you don't do this, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to vote for you anymore. I just think we can't be purists in that sense. And I think if Trump is reelected, we'll have a much better chance of fighting the deep state than if we elect people from the deep state like Joe Biden and we don't change anything. So, so there's no question in my mind that we we have to vote for Trump and anyone who's remotely concerned about any of these topics needs to vote for Trump. I mean, Biden, Biden is is 
sending us even faster into this direction than we would be otherwise. I think people I think people vote for Trump either way. But I think there's going to be a serious lack of morale in organizing that puts his chance of winning at risk when people just say he wouldn't even attend his own oral arguments because a fake made up charge in New York judge told me it wasn't allowed to. Like, how am I supposed to believe this is a guy who's going to fight the deep state when it's just some state court judge who tells you like, think just like, let me let me break this down. A state court judge under false pretenses said, Mr. Former President, I am barring you from going to the Supreme Court during your oral arguments. If Trump says, OK, we're going to get some underling in his next term, a bureaucrat from like the EPA who's going to file a charge against Trump. And then Trump's going to go, well, I guess I lost. I guess I'm not the president anymore. But before you mentioned those suburban women, you were saying, oh, what if these suburban women find it kind of uncomfortable that you're a felon or something like that? Maybe he wouldn't want to go to jail because he wants to win those people. I'm not saying that's the, that's the right thing to do, but I'm saying he you have to balance winning over all of these people who want him to bash the deep state as well as try to win over these swing voters or people who maybe don't want him to be in contempt of court. But if he didn't go, would you agree that that shows a sign of weakness? I don't think it shows a sign of weakness. I think it would just show that that was the strategy decision that he made. And I don't know what he's going to decide. I, I don't know. Maybe he will go. But I'm just saying that I think that you'd have to balance all of those things and thinking about the campaign and what message you're trying to send. Who are you trying to win over? Yeah, I would need to know more about his uh, plans with his lawyer, what their what their legal strategy is. Are they willing to take 30 days in a in a New York jail? Uh, would that be good for, for promo? Is it? I would need to know more to make a claim to be like, Don, do that. I think uh, it was Piers Morgan on the five. Yeah. If they arrest Donald Trump, he'll win in a landslide. Mm -hmm. So maybe the real strategy is actually a no brainer. Trump says, I go to the Supreme Court. I prove that I will fight for this country. They overplay their hand and then make me a martyr. And the whole country says Trump jailed for trying to defend his nation, defend this nation. I could see that. Send send that message. But that's my point. If Trump gets jailed for standing up for this country by going to the Supreme Court oral arguments, that's the, a massive show of strength. Mm-hmm. And then he goes to jail. They're going to make him a martyr. I don't know that it gives him a landslide, but many people think if they jail him, his approval rating skyrockets. I suppose we'll see. Yeah. All right. But let's jump to this next story because we're going to give a shout out to our friend Benny Johnson. Benny got robbed in Oakland. <laughs> It's funny because I laughed about it and people are like, that's mean, Tim. Don't laugh at Benny. Oh, come on. Benny's fine. He filmed the video. They got damaged to their car. And it is it is it is ironic as it is the definition of irony. OK, Benny Johnson went to an Oakland in and out burger that shut down the only location to shut down because while people were in the drive through waiting to get their burgers, people would run up and smash their windows and steal their stuff. So while Benny is there, someone look at look at this. We have uh, ALX says, I was in the car when it happened. The rest of the team was probably 20 feet away. A car pulled up. Someone jumped out, smashed the window and tried to take a bag. I had to rip it from his hands and told him to F off. Oakland is a third world country. Look at this image. We got to pull this up. Okay. I would like to explain to people in simple terms, irony. Uh, Many people like to talk about literary irony, which is perhaps explained as uh, expressing something other than your literal intention. I think that's weak. Irony is a fire truck on fire. That's the perfect visual of physical irony. Irony is the thing that's supposed to put the fire out bursting into flames instead of putting the fire out. Irony is Benny Johnson warning people about escalating crime and robberies getting robbed while he's doing it. Welcome to Oakland. This is what California has in store for you. And the big fear is that well, they say California is five years ahead of the rest of the country. Mm, maybe sometimes, sometimes it's way behind. Uh, no, 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 no. That f- five years is, uh, f- they're ahead of us. I guess they did mm-hmm. legalize weed first. Yeah, they they kind of they're progressive in, in a sense. What happens in California happens to the rest of the country. But I tell five you, later. legalizing I really not. <laughs> theft. Yeah, legalizing theft up to nine hundred dollars is not happening around the country. That was insane and stupid, and we saw the blowback. Like 10 people go in there and each rob $900 worth of stuff and none of them get arrested, even though they robbed collectively $4,500 worth of stuff. Stupid. Yo, Uh, this is crazy. This is nuts. In midday. I've had my car broken into (laughs) midday in San Francisco in 30 minutes that I was away from it. No one was in the car. This guy probably didn't know that Alex was in there. Look, 
Oh, no, for sure. He thought it was a parked car. Yeah. Look at this. Benny tweeted, I just uh, I just got robbed at an In-N-Out burger. And the, the beginning is him pointing to a burger. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, since they increased the minimum wage in California, this burger cost me $12. And so I saw it and I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, I'm, I'll watch your video, Benny. But <laughs> where's the punchline? They robbed me. And then it shows the smashed wind. I was like, oh, man, he got robbed. <laughs> Echo punchline. Literally robbed. <laughs> man. Have you talked to Benny? Has anybody? No. Well, oh, I, I, I don't know. I'm sure they've talked to a lot He's of people. Probably listening. Benny, how are you, man? <laughs> that was nuts, dude. I feel like this is a crazy story, but also we're just not surprised because this is Oakland, yep. and sadly, California has become a third world country. Let me let me play his and video. The rest of the country may become a third world country. This is from the Benny Show. It's only a minute long. In and Out Burger is a beloved fast food franchise. They are wildly popular and expanding everywhere, except for in one. Welcome to the only In-N-Out burger that has ever closed. This is a historic location. You can see the iconic building, but there's a fence around it. The signs have been ripped down and the windows are all boarded up. Why did this In-N-Out burger close? Well, because people were getting robbed in the drive through lane. 1,000 different criminal incidents of people being robbed while trying to get a burger in the drive through lane here. In-N-Out? Yeah, In-N-Out got the out of here. <laughs> the reason that California has descended into a third world criminal hellhole is because of Democrat soft on crime policies that defund the police and that view the criminals as the victim and not the tax paying citizen. Speaking of being a victim, we were literally robbed while we were filming this video. Middle of the afternoon, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. And the car gets smashed. Man, it's something <laughs> hell of a I tweeted something. I tweeted like, ha 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 ha. Benny actually got robbed and then People responded being like, it's so mean of you to make fun of Benny for this. And I'm like, dude, I'm friends with Benny. I'm laughing at the irony of the situation that he got robbed while filming this video. He's fine. They're all fine. Everyone's okay. But that's just absolutely wild. Have you guys seen this viral video going around where a woman just murders another woman in like outside of her apartment? Mm -mm. No. no. So there's another video that's going viral. It's in Seattle. There's two women. One's got a gun and she like kicks the woman out and shoves her out the door. And the woman falls down and starts crying. Then the woman walks back in the house, stops halfway up the stairs, turns around, goes, goes outside and just just kills her. Just starts shooting. Wow. And then and then yells, you dead. It's curse. I don't want to curse, but B, you dead. I'm just like, dude, the stuff that's starting to happen in this country with this crime. And then you have just mass criminal immigration, criminal aliens storming the country. I don't know if the whole Trump argument even matters. Yeah, I think people are more concerned about things like this, honestly. They don't want to have illegals being shipped all over the country committing crimes. And it's just, it's gotten to the point where literally the things that Trump says, which I think originally maybe were hyperbole, like we live in a third world country, we live in a hell hole. It's like, that is literally the case. That's literally happening. And some people living in certain places are just downright unsafe. I, actually, I kind of disagree. I think we are the first world. The, I've heard that the ideas of third world is a very racist thing created by the British to make other countries seem like just to brainwash people into thinking they're they're shitty. But uh, we are the leader of the world and a lot of other countries are suffering just like this right but, now. Russia's at, literally in a war where the men are getting drafted. The Chinese, apparently the economy is falling apart in China. We just don't get to see it. The, so, thir the third world is a reference to unaligned nations during the Cold War. So the first world were the big developed nations, second were their allies, and third were unaligned countries. And because they were, typically they're underdeveloped or undeveloped countries. Mm -hmm. So it's not race, it was about political alignment. Yeah, and, race is and a stupid overused word. I think word. when people think of like a first world country, they think, oh, it's a safe place, it's a place I could go and go to school and work and kind of have a normal life. And a third world country is a place where maybe there are going to be, you know, violent mobs and an open border and things like that. And that's why I feel like we're becoming more of a third world country because we're just allowing this to happen and we're kind of encouraging it in the sense that they're saying, hey, we're not even going to have, you know, cash bail. We're going to make it so that if you commit a crime, there's not really a punishment. Yet, if you're someone who's a conservative, I mean, God forbid you live in a place like New York because you're going to be persecuted. So I just feel like that kind of justice system is is totally something a third world country would so do. So I will clarify, because I just did a fact check. Second world was Soviet allies. And first mm. was capitalist allies. Yeah, it was, third was unaligned. It was British propaganda. They made it like U.S., first world, Russia, second world, and everyone that joined us, they'll be in the third world with us. 
So no, uh, I think Third World was on the line, like, wasn't it? Like colonized or like just a, a lot of African nations and stuff. So anyway, that's what I've heard about the whole First World, Second World thing is the British propaganda, just so people know. Hmm. Yeah, countries that are not aligned. It meant they weren't with Soviet Union or the United States, mm. the capitalist countries. They had no use Probably for those. Probably because they didn't have any resources to be able to get involved in anything. So they were like, you guys are doing stuff and we are just living in chaos. Yeah. Third world. This is, I think, what I'm getting out of it is weak leadership. And that is, I've heard that term throughout my life and it was kind of like cliche, but literally Biden is like, oh, don't invade Haifa, Israel. You saw that like, video. Yeah, that's an Israeli wow, city. Dude. He told Israel not to invade its own city. He yeah, but mm -hmm. he said the wrong word. I don't care about the words he said. It was that he was on the verge of dying. There's mm -hmm. another, did you see the other one? He's like, he says something, they go, yeah. It was just, you just reposted it today. They start oh, cheering. Yeah. Are, you, are you ready to? Oh, yeah. Are you ready to prioritize freedom over democracy? Let me, let me, because that, me... that's what we're doing. And they were like, yeah. <laughs> like, did, okay. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to do in the United States, freedom first. And then we build a democracy out of democratic republic, out of the freedoms that we have. But freedom's implicit. Freedom is above all else. Of course, law and order is super, super important or you oh, can't man. maintain the freedom. This is this zealous cheering in the background. They don't even know what he was saying. Or yeah, I think I say. it. Let me see if I can pull it up. It's gorgeous. So this is like weak leadership because a normal leader would be like, yo, you can't have that crime in California. Step it up. Get the National Guard over there. You cannot let that go down. Uh, and let's fix the border. But now you now you get why people want Trump, because Trump walks on stage and mocks a journalist who got body slammed because Trump Trump comes on stage. And when 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 Megyn Kelly is like, you know, you called women fat pigs, he goes, only Rosie O'Donnell. <laughs> and with like like that, with pure confidence, I don't care. I'll do what I want. And a lot of people went good. Finally, someone who's going to be at least strong. He's he is somewhat, and I don't know him personally. I'd love to meet him, but like this, his 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 bulking at sending out the National Guard during the George Floyd riots is, is baffles me. Like he didn't want to be seen as a bad guy. I think he's concerned too much about his public opinion. Arguably, I mean it's a tough job, and I don't like backseat driving this thing. This is, I, I think hindsight, Trump would have done it. Hindsight being twenty twenty, I think right now, if you ask Trump, would do you, do you now regret not deploying or invoking the Insurrection Act and sending out the troops? He'd probably say, yeah. Yeah, you step up, you put it out early, you put out the fire right away. Because he lost no, anyway. There's no destructive riots. You got to get on it early, though. The same thing with the border. When you let them come in, and the, the, then more people will come, and you'll have an even bigger flood of people. So you've got to stomp it out quickly. You've got to you got to set up border defenses and prevent it right away. The to, bigger question, I suppose, is what is Trump doing right now to counteract the shadow campaign that is obviously in play to stop him from he's got him. truth social truth social is about to launch video uh, their own video streaming service that's pretty cool and he's a co-owner of that company so that's that's definitely like it's a technological war in a lot of ways so we're up against you know banking cartels and not we i'm not saying it, we're all but it, oh, there's a banking cartels that are trying to control us through technocracy econo technocratic i think econo technic is what dennis kucinich called it an mm. econo technic government i thought it was fascinating and well so i like truth social Let's show people the alternative. I'd like to give you a couple clips of your president from Clown World, Biden. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Okay, well, here you go. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs> they all start clapping. Yes, that one guy. <laughs> what yes. are they clapping for? I don't know. No. Look how, look, look, I'm going to play it again. Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy? Because that's America. Yes. <laughs> Is there... Is there something else here? Did is he saying Trump's so stupid? He asks questions like, "Are you ready to choose freedom over democracy?" Because that's America, and they're laughing because he's making fun of Trump. Are we missing some context here? What are they clapping for? What does this even mean? I suppose freedom over democracy is republicanism. Maybe it's a five-second clip too. I would love the context, right. but this one's more important. Everybody's calling out Biden for telling Israel not to attack Israel. It's actually good advice. Israel, don't attack Israel. Uh, that being said, it's not what he said, it's how he says it. Watch this video. Let me actually see if we can, we can make it big for you. Be clear to Israelis, don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, it, anyway, I, I just, look what we did recently when Israel was attacked. Just, just here we go again, listen, look, look at his Israelis, eyes. Don't move on Haifa. It's just not, I mean, Anyway, I, I just look what we did recently 
Look at his hands. When Israel was attacked. I'd like to he say this man like is this. being held together by duct tape, but the truth is he's held, he's being held together by amphetamines, NAD, and other vitamin IV supplements. Man, you can see in his eyes after he says, don't move on Haifa, that he said the wrong word. I think he realizes it, and that's why he stops, and he looks around and goes, anyway. Look at his eyes. He can't see. It seems he like he's going to lose his ability to speak also. Yeah. It's like he's starting to lose his ability to communicate. And so him just moving his mouth looks like a lot of effort. But even at his most lucid yesterday, he dreamed up a story about his uncle being shot down and, and landing eaten in a... by cannibals. <laughs> eaten by cannibals. <laughs> oh, we got to pull that one up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I still haven't watched the full <clears throat> speech. This is a good one. Yo, so the military apparently put out a statement saying... <laughs> Even Associated Press was correcting it today. What is... The, oh, you guys said today. Well, let me pull it up. Was Biden's uncle eaten by cannibals near New Guinea? We got White on. House admits Biden's uncle wasn't <laughs> eaten by cannibals. <laughs> Died in Pacific Ocean crash. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, wow. your sitting president said to the world his uncle was eaten by cannibals. I got to hear it. I, I just... I didn't hear it with my own ears. Uh, well, yet. he suggested okay. he, that that he, might yes, have happened. He very <laughs> heavily implies. Here you go. What's, uh, where's the audio at? Uh, no, this isn't the clip. And on Sunday, Someone the next day, oh, my God. mother's four brothers all went down to the recruiting station and joined the military. Why is he running? Every one of them volunteered. And my uncle, they called him Ambrose, uh, Brosie, they called him Bozy. My uncle Bozy was a hell of an athlete. They'd tell me when he was a kid. And he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single-engine planes as reconnaissance over war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea. And uh, they never found the body because there used to be there were a lot of cannibals for real. <laughs> no, no, no. Wait. He told the story twice. There's only oh, no. one inference, okay? <laughs> they didn't find the body because there were a lot of cannibals. <laughs> Joe Biden said his uncle was eaten by cannibals. Dude, that guy. Oh, wait, wait. wait. Can I just point something out please. real quick? Please. When I was watching this clip, and he's like, my uncle was a, was like an airman or whatever, he says he f he flew the single engine planes. I was like, holy crap. He's talking about 1920. <laughs> he's like talking those, about 1920, like dude. P 50, what are those? Not P-51s. Is that what they were? P-51s? Those are like propeller plane, single. What, Biden, North he's like American 80? Mustang. Those are a little later. 1940. What, what year was Biden born? So I want to pull, pull up his birth year. Yeah. 40... Four. He's also just obviously way advanced, like even beyond what 42. he forty two twenty twenty. Yeah, like Yo, he is time. declining the, quickly. The last year has been a de escalation rapidly, rapidly terrifyingly. Yeah, Biden so was like, born during World War Two, but it's getting way worse. Yeah, November twentieth, nineteen forty two, and it, it, it he well, he actually told that story twice because he he sh told it to reporters when he was at the Wilkes Bar Scranton International Airport before he aborted Air Force One, and when he told the story that time, he ended by saying, and this is the official White House readout: my my grand, my uncle Ambrose Finnegan, uncle Uncle Bosey was a hell of a guy. From what I I never met him, obviously. His uncle Bozy never met him. <laughs> never, he, he died in forty four. <laughs> so he probably was flying a P fifty two or a fifty one or something. One of those sing, those propeller planes. So he's talking about the forties, not the twenties. But wow, when I was like, "What year is he?" He's talking about it's like a hundred years ago, dude. Yeah. Yo, it was actually wild when he was like, it was before the Air Force, and he was in those single engine. And I'm like, wait, wait, what year was the Air Force formed? I don't know. He said something like that. Mm -hmm. what, what what's the exact quote? He flew single-engine planes, reconnaissance flights over New Guinea. Uh, that's part of it. It's like a Eaten by cannibals. He got shot down in an area where there were a lot of cannibals at the time. They never recovered his body. But the government went, went back. I went down there, and they checked and found some parts of the plane. <laughs> oh, yeah. He told reporters in Scranton. He told it twice. Yeah. I thought it was just the one-off, but no, he's told the story twice now. Incredible. Wow. Yeah, one thing I thought was crazy is Nancy Pelosi was born in 1940. That was a long time ago. Wow. Yeah. It's, I, with Biden, I would love, Joe, please resign. Like, not, don't resign the presidency. Serve your term, but like, let somebody run, man. We need a president right now that's cognitive. We just need it, dude. It's, we need it, man. It's not you. It's not personal. We need this. It, we all, it, I don't know who, who would run. Maybe our RFK is already off the Democratic. He, he's not, he's going to swap over and run as a Democrat. Gavin Newsom hasn't even said a word about it. Michelle Obama seems like she wants nowhere near that office. And who else could 
could service that role. It seems like the Democrats, like, they're settled on Biden. They like that they can control him. I just don't know how long he's going to live. Mm -hmm. Or be cognitive. <laughs> yeah, you just say it. You know, I got a heavy note. <laughs> what, is, what is it? Give me the goods. Uh, Iran may have just got hit. Oh. But keep talking and oh, wow. we'll do some fact checking while we go through it. Cool. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the, the Democrats don't have a deep bench. They don't really have anybody that, that they, at least that they think could get the votes. They probably, in fact, don't have anybody that could get votes. Mm -hmm. And Bernie um, Sanders just, just supported Biden? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, like not surprising a at this point in his career. AOC, can you like pull one out of the bullpen and like throw a save right now? I, I know that you're supposed to be like a unit as the party, but not really. The, you're supposed to be a unit as a country. So we need a solid leader. Yeah, Republican infighting is horrible, but at least we all have brains to at least debate things and not all just back someone who's comatose because of the letter behind their name. I mean, the fact that they're all backing Biden on the left, it's like, I don't even know how you can think that he's the functioning president. That video of him, I do see, you see the milkshake video. He's going, he mm -hmm. like Trump went and bought everybody milkshakes. And everyone's like laughing and cheering. So Biden's now trying to go buy like milkshakes and sandwiches. He went to a Wawa. Apparently stage. Copy Trump. And then he's like, whoa, what do you got? In a, what do you got? How about a milkshake? And the guy's like, just walk <laughs> over there and you can order a milkshake. He's like, black, black and white milkshake? He's like, whatever you want, sir. And he's like, I'm going to order a milkshake. And then he walks and wander, starts walking off with like Cornholio. You know, the Cornholio hands is weird. What is that? I've heard it's something to do with, with mental degradation. Yeah, I've, I've heard it's like a dementia thing. Like where they put their hands out like this and they walk like Beavis. Yeah. If we were doing Biden what the left is doing to Trump, I don't think Biden would survive. The stress. I don't know how Biden survives at all. I yeah, mean, they must be pumping him. He, yeah, full of there was that one image where it looked like he had an IV mark on his hand. I mm. bet they're giving crazy, like I bet he's, they're pumping him full of NAD stem cells and meth. Just crazy. You name it, like anything to wire them up. Yeah, probably. It's crazy when the when they'll do that to a leader. Like Hitler was also on massive. I'm not also. Oh, yeah. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. Biden is because I don't know officially. Right, we don't like, know. Hitler was on. A lot you ever seen the video too. of Hitler like rocking oh, back yeah. and forth? Oh, that's he's a good like, one. <laughs> he's out of his <laughs> mind. That dude was on yeah. drugs. No wonder his brain yeah. was rotten. They had that doctor. Yeah. Was it doctor? Not Doctor Feelgood. That was Michael Jackson's doctor. <laughs> he had a, a doctor that would service. Yeah, not them. that one. Hitler's doctor. That's an interesting guy to read about. I don't, I don't, I, I was pissed off this morning. Like, I don't know. There was like breaking news. Something happens. And then I see this video of Biden clearly incapable of speech. His eyes are squinty. Israel, don't attack Israel. And I'm like, what? How is there any amount of people saying they're going to vote for Joe Biden? If they came out and said, I didn't vote for Joe, I'll vote for RFK. Like RFK should be at 53 among women, not Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. The fact that there is a single human being being, I'm voting for Joe Biden, says there's something deeply wrong with humans. Yeah, maybe they're voting for who they thought he was a couple of years ago, which was even strange. Because like five years ago, I'm, I can get it. Five years ago, the Biden of five or six years. What happened was that we kind of dipped out of the public eye between 2016 and almost 2020, really. He didn't, yeah. I didn't hear much from him in the media mm. until he I mean, ran. The left has like total control over the media and every information that they disseminate is propping up Biden. They don't actually have free discourse like we're doing here. Like they're basically just there in order to push Biden across the finish line. And a lot of people don't even look beyond that. They don't look beyond what they see on social media or on, you know, whatever, Instagram or something. They just they just think, oh, wow, I, I think Republicans are evil. I have to vote for it, vote for whoever the the, the the Democrat is vote for Biden. There's this thing thinking of winning and losing. This is something I, I was a little critical of Donald Trump about, and I will be directly to your face, Don, if you want to talk about it. But like talking about winning, it's not really about winning. Like, yeah, there is a vote process that then will show who got more votes. But the, the winning is us all surviving and living in peace. Uh, it doesn't really matter who the president is. If there's someone better than you, then they should be president. And then so the idea of well, winning, it's like, let's get our guy across the finish line. There's no finish line here. We just need a solid organizer at the helm. Like we well, have to change the culture, you're saying. Definitely. Yeah, not just the election. Let's jump Correct. to this, let's let's jump to this breaking that. news. We may have World War Three, or maybe not. We don't know. Jerusalem Post reports explosions heard in Iran, Syria, Iraq. According to a report, explosions were heard in Isfahan in central Iran in the As Suwaida. Uh, 
Governorate of South Syria and in the Baghdad area and Babel Governorate of Iraq early Friday morning, according to initial reports. This is breaking right now. We don't have a lot of information. Spectator Index says Sky News Arabia reports citing Iranian media that there have been three large explosions in Isfahan, Iran. Uh, so there is concern this may be uh, a, a, an Israeli uh, retaliation. We don't know. But uh, while we wait for more information on that, I do want to point out, I believe U.S. support for Israel is over completely. Right now, we are what we're looking at is the older generations which who support Israel and religious folk who do. They tend to be older. All of these people support Israel. The younger generation is of two minds. One, deeply anti-Israel, completely opposed in support of Palestine. The other, anti-interventionist, doesn't want to fund it at all. When the boomers and those who are pro-Israel and Gen X uh, pass on, it's going to be 65 to 70% no Israel. You're going to get a bunch of, like the Trump base is going to be split down the middle between people who are like, we like Israel, and the other half being like, yes, but we don't want to fund it. They can defend themselves, but no funding, like Vivek was saying. I want them to defend, my, them, defend themselves. They can defend themselves and we shouldn't be giving them money. And then you're going to have the left just screaming, no, period. We oppose Israel. So that means you're going to have three fourths of, of, of the political bases saying we will not support Israel and only a small percentage. So th th we, have this, we have this big story going on at uh, Columbia. Ilhan Omar, uh, Omar's daughter was suspended. Multiple students were arrested at Columbia during pro-Hamas protest. They've been occupying Colombia in support of Palestine, opposing Israel. And so I see this and I'm just like, yeah, young people are not going out in support of Israel. We do not see occupations at universities in support of Israel. And the younger generation that are on the other side of this are like, the U.S. government shouldn't be funding this. It's not our war. It's not our problem. I don't see how Israel, uh, they, they, like, I don't see how U.S. support for Israel lasts longer than 20 years. Like 20 years from now, I just see it being gone. Well, one thought. thing that's crazy is a lot of Jews in America vote for Democrats. So that's kind of a problem because you'd well, think they would be the main people who would be wanting to support Israel. I but think that's a lot actually of the time that that well, recently they've been waking up, but a lot of a lot of them in the past have not been. I think that's a good that's a great point to exemplify how Israel is not all Jews. Because there are progressives who there are progressive Jewish people who march with pro Palestinian protesters. Mm -hmm. They don't like Israel. They're Jewish and in America. So it's it's just it's not yeah, a monolith. It does make sense. The Israeli well, government it, 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 is it's definitely simple. different. It does. It does. It's, it's not a monolith. There are Jews mm. in the United States who don't care or don't like Israel. Something that, that they were always allowed to do that and feel that way. But it shows that there is not some like unified belief that Israel should be that there, there was a big group of like uh, 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 Jewish protesters with leftists, and they were they were saying they were anti-Zionist Jews. They don't believe that Israel had a right to exist. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, there they go. They exist, and they vote for these policies. From the Democrats, so that's yeah, another I mean, that's another point. Like Twenty people, years, it's over. Mm -hmm. It's like people who are um, Muslim and Democrats going out there for LGBTQ stuff, as if that's something that's going on in the Middle East. It's like those people wouldn't really survive in the Middle East. So they have they have a very strange coalition of people that. All right. Totally different things. So we're not quite there yet, but Spectator Index is saying Syria media reports Israeli airstrikes in Syria and warplane activity now across Iraq which is indicative of the, the explosions in Iran may have been an Israeli retaliation. There was a, Which means, I don't know, Russia enters the war on the side of Iran. They the said US they would, are, if the US, right. yeah, if the US, if the US got involved. But the US is already in on the side of, of Israel. And they said they're not sending, Biden said he's not sending weapon anymore. Or he said, I don't know. They, they said they're not going to help if, if Israel r responds to this, uh, this attack, or whatever you want to call it. What happened? Israel attacked a consulate. Is that what it was? And then yeah. Iran responded by shooting 300 ballistics, some of the Isra drones, some Israel of the missiles. Israel targeted an, an Iranian general who was organizing and commanding Hamas as part of their war with Hamas. And that was in Syria? And it was in Syria. Right? Okay. And then so Iran, Iran retaliated with a direct strike from Iran and through militia groups and the Houthi rebels into Israel, striking a uh, an Air Force base. Mm -hmm. I think one girl died, I've heard. In Israel. One person died, wow. I think. I've heard. Mm -hmm. I so know. of 300 attacks, Israel, uh, uh, five it, of them broke yeah. through. And Israel vowed to retaliate. There was um, It an, may be happening right now. There's an excellent debate <sighs> that went on last night with a zero hedge. It was Dennis Prager and Batya Unger Sargon versus uh, Chank Uger and Dave Smith. And they were talking about this all night. Sa uh, Sagar and Jetty was the moderator. It was fantastic. And you've, you should watch this, this 
hour, two hour uh, debate. I've seen about an hour and a half so far. I was listening to it before I fell asleep. And one of the things that Dave points out very, very clearly is that the Israeli government propped up Hamas in 2003, four, five, something like that, in order to guarantee uh, discrepancy between the Palestinian governments. They had the PLO and they're like, we want two so that they can't get a two state solution. And so the argument Dave kept making was, how can you defend Israel being like, hey, Hamas, how could you do that to us? We're going to attack you when they were the ones that propped Hamas up. They thought they could, in quotes, control the flame of Hamas. Right. We control the height of the flame is what Netanyahu yeah. said. It's like yeah. you, you fund the bad guy until they get so dangerous that you have to fight the bad guy. It's happened over and over again historically. And so like so many people know that, that they funded Hamas and they're like, they, they, they have no tolerance for this idiocy. Like the cognitive dissonance is, is shattering, shaking and like aligning. People are seeing what they've done. I think that's where why the support is waning personally. And it wasn't even like there was some sort of uh, ineptitude involved in this. Like they funded Hamas as a strategy. It was a it was a targeted strategy. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's led to a really bad situation, obviously. Did you know that that uh, Hamas was funded by Israel as a strategy? No, yeah. no. Which is that <laughs> does that change your point of view of the dynamics that are at play in that situation? I know it certainly did when I found out about it. So. So I mean, uh, to be honest, I feel like a lot of younger people just don't really want us involved in foreign wars. And yeah. I think I, I kind of see it similarly to that in the sense that I don't think we need to be mediating every foreign conflict and being involved in kind of the internal politics of every country. Obviously, I think Israel should defend itself, but um, I feel like America has major problems at home. I mean, we just sent more money to Ukraine. We're not putting in anything to our border. We have serious issues. So uh, OSINT Defender says Iraqi sources reporting airstrikes in the capital of Baghdad have targeted a building in which a high ranking meeting was taking place involving several Iranian backed groups and members of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Uh, very much sounds like Israel launched a, a strike in Syria, Iraq and Iran. I wonder what they think is going to happen to their country now. What does Israel think? Yeah. Israel's thinking, you know, the way I described it on Twitter is. You ever see these videos where it's like some short woman is yelling at a guy being like, screw you. My boyfriend could beat you up. My boyfriend will beat your ass. And the guy's like, oh, yeah. And the guy's like, come on, stop, stop. Like, I don't want to get into a fight with this guy. And then they get into a fight. That's basically what it's like. Like Israel is basically saying we're like Israel's at war. They're fighting. I know the analogy is not perfect because basically like the other guy's girlfriend hit the girl first, like Hamas and Israel have been fighting for a long time. Israel retaliates against those who are uh, who are at war with them and they're at war with. And then Iran strikes Israel. Now Israel says we're striking back. But Israel's attitude is probably like the U.S. is standing right behind us. Doesn't matter what Joe Biden says in the short term. We know that if it comes if it, if it comes to war, the U.S. enters on the side of Israel. Russia enters on the side of Iran. But at what cost? Man, what are they thinking? What, what is this policy? I don't get it. You would think the Iranians had to do something in return. That's why they fired well, those you, ballistics. 99% of them didn't get through. It was like- Do you know why they did? Do you know why in Iran- In response? But do you, I what, think it was so they didn't look weak to their own people. And because there would be a revolution in Iran if they- Yeah, if they, if they wouldn't fight back, the people would be like, get out government. And you, the same is need. true for Israel. And so now, but it's like, it, with it, this part of the debate last night, and it was all pretty clear, like you you won Israel, like you got it. You got them over. The Iron, def, the Iron Dome worked. You don't need to push any harder now. But it, it doesn't matter. The people of Israel would not accept a government that refused to maybe, retail after being maybe, attacked. But a lot of the people in Israel, as far as I can tell, don't want the war. A lot of people don't want war. Like Nobody uh, wants war. Yeah, nobody really, except for governments. And oftentimes. so the, the attitude is always like this. The people of Iran say, Israel attacked our embassy and they killed our guy. We can't stand for that. You have to. They, they attacked us. And they go, OK. And then Israel goes, no, that guy's commanding a military that attacked us. And then Hamas is like, you occupied our land. You attacked us. That's a lot. No of one thinks they started the war. Yeah, Everyone's defending themselves from everyone else. I'm really and scared And the rest of us get pulled Israel. into that Middle East quagmire. Man, hypersonic weapons are no joke, dude. Did you guys watch the PSA from New York on how to survive a nuclear bomb? <laughs> Remember that a couple years ago? Oh, yeah. yeah. Three years ago. Yeah. They said to, uh, what, like cover the windows, stick towels under the doors, duck and cover. That would really work well. Well, the idea is not to survive a direct impact. It's for like the radioactive particles that'll go through the air and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure dust particles aren't coming under your door. Yeah. Yeah, because that radiation will get in your food and then it goes in your thyroid. And then, you know, it's, it's a, I, what is it? Iodine 131? 
Is that what it is? That helps you uh, prevent no, I, radiation damage? No, iodine-131 is the radioactive isotope which enters your thyroid and then d gives you cancer. Um, I think, though, that... I could be wrong the on other, the number, though. Is it the, 131? Also known... Yes, yes. The other Radio countries isotope. in the Middle Radio East, though, 131? like Iran, I mean, Iran is pretty antagonistic towards us. So, Big time. Yeah. Yeah, so, ever since the Iranian Israel revolution, the Iranians used to be a democratic country. And then the, what was it, the CIA that overthrew the Shah to put in the Ayatollah Khomeini? Is that right? Carter was behind all that. And he really messed up that whole situation. And that's how we ended up with Khomeini. And also, according to Dave Smith, who's a freaking genius, uh, he's talking about Iraq. And what we did in Iraq was there was this Shia minority in charge of the country and all these Sunnis in the country, which Iran is a Sunni nation. So we went in, we disrupted the Shia government. All these Sunnis then, am I getting this wrong, Serge? Can you, can you, can you unmute and explain this? Thank you. I'm just, Iran is not, Iran is Shia, not Sunni. That's all. Then I'm, maybe I'm getting it backwards, but yeah. basically we went and we disrupted the flow and then all the, this Iraqi, it just created all this Iranian influence in Iraq. And they basically have bound together now, more or less, way more than they were. They used to be at war. Saddam Hussein yeah. was, we were funding Saddam Hussein to fight the Iranians. Mm -hmm. I think that's the way it was going. I mean, they all don't want Israel there because Israel's basically like, a uh, pro-U.S. type of place that's right next to them. And Israel's bordering these countries that hate them. I mean, none of them want to take in Palestinians because I don't think they want to resolve the Palestinian conflict. You know, Egypt's like, no way, I'm not, I'm not, we're not going to take them. I mean, all these countries could. Like, they, they don't want to solve the peace, though, because it helps them if Israel seems like the bad guy and is, you know, the one perpetuating the conflict. They want to be, they want to be anti-Israel not just because of the the conflict with the people. It's like clearly like a bigger conflict, I think, with the Middle East being anti-American and, and anti-Israeli. Um, Spectator Index now reporting that several commercial planes appear to be diverting from parts of Iranian airspace. Blasts were heard. Uh, Al Arabia reporting, signing around international. Several blasts heard in Isfahan. Warplanes in Iraq. Yeah, so, uh, you know, duck and cover. They said they were potassium talking. iodide is what you want to protect yourself from iodine one thirty one. So uh, we'll give everybody some some information that may save their lives when uh, there is radiation from a nuclear blast or something like that. The first concern is uh, iodine one thirty one. It's very light, so it can uh, travel about relatively easily. And if it gets in your hands uh, and it gets into your body, it will be absorbed by your thyroid and then cause cellular death and mutation, which can kill you. So what people do is they buy potassium iodide. All that does is give your body so much iodine that it can't absorb anymore. So if you accidentally ingest the radioactive isotope, your body just passes it and doesn't keep it in your body. This is why radiation suits are actually just thin cloth, because you're not actually trying to protect yourself or sometimes like plastic or something. But it's not about protecting yourself from like gamma wave radiation. You're, you're trying to block out alpha and beta particles small bits of matter that emit radioactive waves. And so uh, during, I learned all this because I went to Fukushima. And so there was a, a, on the ground, the radiation levels was something like 200 times background and we were walking it. So, uh, you know, there's some there, uh, some concern there for me and Luke who were there and our guide fixer, she died of cancer. I think thyroid cancer because she wasn't wearing any, any gear and did it over and over and over again. But um, yeah, there's mox, there was, there was a, what was it? I think it was like mox plutonium was one of the uh, uh, radioactive particles that came out of Fukushima, but that was very dense and it sank and didn't make it very far. But iodine-131 could travel on the surface of water or in the air, and that had people freaked out in California. I was in California when uh, Fukushima Daiichi happened, and pot potassium iodide was sold out in every store in like 20 minutes. Hmm. Yeah, crazy. Hmm. So uh, you know, in the event that uh, you know someone launches an ICBM, have you signed up for your local Vault Tech Vault? Oh yeah, Vault Tech. No, no, I haven't. Vault four twenty, daily rations. I see you in the chat. There's a a company that's advertising all over Instagram that they make underground bunkers. Mark Zuckerberg have built an underground one? bunker. No, um, we have a uh, we 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 have we're part of a different company uh, that has. A variety of lodging from underground to above ground and stuff in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Yeah, super cheap. It's not really expensive. It's not like you really think about it. But these, uh, uh, I'll give a shout out to Fortitude Ranch because what they do is it's, it's more so like vacation rentals. 
that are equipped for the apocalypse. Mm. So for the most part, people go out there, they go hunting. It's like they, p- people who like you want to go rough it and be. But able, in case the apocalypse hits, I think the real there. I think the real business proposition for something like Fortitude Ranch is you get to go and check out what looks like a cool survival place while you hang out in a log cabin and watch movies with your wife or whatever and enjoy popcorn by the fire and sit outside mm-hmm. and there's chickens and animals. And it's more so a getaway. That's the real value proposition. But hey, if you're a member, you have your vacation. And if the apocalypse happens, I suppose you bought your winning lottery ticket. I, I, I don't, I think most people don't really expect the world to end that way and for you to really need to go underground or anything like that. But uh, we hung out at the one in uh, West Virginia and it's real fun because it's just like a dog running around and they got chickens and, you know, you hunt and there's a shooting range and stuff like that. So it's really just like a resort, like a woodsy backcountry resort kind of deal. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah, my mind's like, is it too late? You guys think it's too late for the culture of victory? You know, maybe World War Three is why they don't care about Joe Biden. Maybe the reason they don't seem to be campaigning all that hard is because they're just like, we don't care about any of this. World War Three is on schedule. And so none of that matters. Trump is sitting here like, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And they're like, <laughs> World War Three is coming. Yeah, buddy. they don't even care about campaigning. I mean, they clearly have no concerns about the fact that Biden is incapable of campaigning. Not just that he won't, but he literally like physically probably can't and mentally can't. Which makes me think so that they, they have want other it. plans. Yeah, like they, they prefer that he's incapable because otherwise you you desperately get another candidate right away. Yeah, I mean if they put him in front of people, it looks bad. Looks like we got uh, uh, Jerusalem Post is posting some kind of video. This could be fake. This is Jerusalem Post. What's that mean? Oh, Jerusalem Post. I see. Right. This is com- coming yeah, from could- Suweda twenty four. Uh, can't really see anything though. Fog of war. Mm. Just sounds like rockets are being launched. Mm-hmm. Residents of, uh, oh, here you go. <laughs> Objects seen in the sky above Jerusalem after Iran launched drones. Okay. So we still don't know for sure. We No idea. No idea. Maybe maybe World War Three just started. Okay. Illustrative image of an airstrike. Right. Oh. As an aside, did you guys hear that uh, Netflix made a documentary and used AI imagery in it? Yeah. It's a Was big it scandal. No, they, they made a documentary about a woman who murdered somebody. And then mm. to make her look innocent, they used an AI image of her looking happy and nice. Wow. Yeah. No kidding. Something wow. like that. That's what people are posting on Twitter. Huh. That like, she, it's a woman who got convicted of murder or something. I could be wrong because I, I only saw a cursory tweet. But then it's but then there's like a picture of her smiling and laughing. And it was an AI image. They were like trying to make it look like she was a normal happy person before the case. But it was fake. Yeah. That's so crazy. Weird. Yep, my morale is shot right now. Or how are you guys? Feeling? AI is getting out of control. Your morale is shot. Yeah, this, Why? Because World this, War Three. This Israeli strike is making me really nauseous. Not not quite nauseous, but like my heart is uneasy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're in West Virginia, so mm. I'm not too worried. We're all stuck on Earth, though. You know, even if the largest nuclear weapon ever was detonated over DC, it wouldn't affect us. You know, not the blast, but mm. reassuring. So, uh, Good to know. Maximum SAR bomba which would never penetrate DC defenses, by the way, because it's a gravity bomb, meaning they have to drop it. Uh, we would feel like the windows would break. That's it. There'd be no thermal radiation. There'd be no uh, um, uh, no radiation in general. We would just feel a shockwave and be like, whoa, and what just happened? That's just if we were on a flat plane. We also have the mountains exactly. and all that. Yeah, so once, like right now, this is our, uh, tomorrow is our last day in the studio. No more will there be the skateboard. And actually, the skateboard might stay, but the the pirate ninja thing, <laughs> I don't even know what that's all about, to be honest. <laughs> Love it. That's going to stay. And then uh, the new studio will be Monday. And then, yeah, we got mountains all over. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's great. Yeah. Ain't nothing getting through. And uh, But they do airburst for that reason. The nukes blow up in the air so that the wave goes over and hits more terrain. But uh, standard nuclear uh, warheads, they would not reach anywhere near where we are it's, it's pretty wild though if you look at the uh it's like nuclear detonation map or something and they show you the range how big a blast would be and you c- it, it's remarkable how ground strikes they cover nothing nuclear bomb hits the ground nothing it, it barely spreads mm. like it, it, it's significant don't get me wrong but air burst just hits everything because it spreads out maximum shockwave damage fire and everything and so um 
standard nuclear warheads would we we, we probably wouldn't even hear any we, we, we might hear like thun, thunder mm. we might hear like a boom and be like oh i wonder what that was then we look on the news and be like holy crap because some of these things could wipe out all of dc intercontinental ballistic missile and it's crazy because we're, we're like an hour away from it driving but that's far enough to where this is i watched there's this uh channel on youtube called the great war and it is a documentary channel about world war one and they started it in 2014 like the week that world war one started 100 years later and then they do every week they would put out videos about what happened in world war one and he keeps indiana is the guy's name he keeps reminding you about the horror of modern war because you don't know what weapons are going to get used they haven't been introduced yet and so the yep. tank for instance the mm -hmm. uh, trench warfare they thought this is how they've always fought mm -hmm. trench warfare then they invented like gas attacks mm -hmm. flamethrowers uh machine guns yeah when, yeah the machine gun and people crazy. would just run as normal forward and just get mowed there's Bro, film of the people battle, just falling the battle of gettysburg the confederates were using breech loaders and the union army had adopt i'm sorry the confederates were using muzzle loaders and the and the, the union had adopted breech loaders so the confederates were fighting with a bang stuff the thing down do, 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 and the union was fighting with bang crack in close bang yup so the Union were like, their 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 uh, rate of fire was way higher. And so the Confederates are standing there trying to reload, just getting mowed down wow. like crazy. Yeah. Technological Whoa. advances, man. And, but they, they don't know. This is, and at the end of every episode of The Great War, pretty much every episode, Indy's like the horror of modern war. And then that, and that week, 170,000 people were killed or like 80,000 people died in that three month battle of, of the Asanzo river. They fought the Italians were fighting the Asanzo river, like oh. 11 times. Kyle Petty says, Tim, you can still be hit by the radiation. Fallout rides the wind stream, which flows to the East. We have been very much over this. Not only are we surrounded by mountains, but the wind travels East. We will not be hit, uh, hit by the, by, by radiation through the wind. Um, Short of any kind of rotating wind pattern that changes, almost like in in all circumstances, it carries up towards New York. It doesn't go back west. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not uh, not worried. I suppose it's due to the mountains. The wind doesn't flow in that direction. It's blocked. And so it ends up being pushed in a different direction. New York will get hit by a lot of radiation. If DC were to get hit, it's crazy. The, 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 the path of radiation through the wind, like if, if DC got hit, New York would have to issue a warning that DC is hours away from being slammed by a wave of radioactive particulates. Imagine being in New York and hearing that. In a couple hours, the whole city will be inundated by radiation. Hide in your basements now. Seal all your windows before it's too late. People get in their cars, start driving. Yeah, I mean, most people in the apartments don't have basements. So. Yep, you got to stick mm -hmm. towels in the doors. Yeah, and hope you and fill up fill up your bathtub with water and then seal it because once that water is gone, you're done. Yep. Wow. Yeah, yeah I mean, World War One, like you were saying, it created so much disillusionment. It like totally changes the culture. Like you think war is like, oh, war is going to happen and then it'll be over with. But like the world was never the same after that. I mean, even the word irony, it never really existed before World War One. But after that, it's like people were fighting, they were dying and they didn't really know why. And I think so many young men were probably just like, wow, I'm so disillusioned All right. with the world now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, was spectator Index. Is is outright reporting Israel has conducted missile strikes on Iran. Oh, wow. Spectator Index. Let's uh, let's see if we can get any more confirmation, ladies and gentlemen. Who will know when World War Three began? It says U.S. official tells ABC News that Israel conducted airstrikes. <laughs> Spectator. Holy crap, yeah. dude! Two seconds ago. Oh man, um, I have. This is wild. Commercial flights are being diverted. Emirates are being diverted. Wow. Spectator index report. U.S. officials tell ABC News Israel conducted airstrikes on a target in Iran. Oh, my God. Let's see if we can get this. I mean, we essentially knew that they would. You know, it's just yeah, a matter of time. So here we are. I thought they wouldn't. What made you think that? That they, would, that they already, the, their Iron Dome's good enough. They don't need to. That was what I thought. Well, I would, uh, I'm going to have to send you a copy of an interesting essay that I read called uh, Israel, the Psychotic Nation. Quite the reading experience. Yeah. It's written by an academic. And he basically takes the characteristics that apply in psychology to psychotic people and then uses Israeli and Jewish sources in their own words to show that, that those same characteristics apply to that entire nation. Like the government? 
Well, not just the government, because, I mean, the people in Israel do support this war, overwhelmingly. Uh, well, it, okay, if not a war, they re they support the uh, the response that they've taken against and the Gaza Strip against Palestinians. Um, so it's not just the government in this case. The Likud so they, is the name of the government? The party? Yeah, that, that's who runs the government right now. Yeah. Yeah, so I think on TV, ABC News must have reported this. It's not on Twitter yet, but I'm seeing a lot of people have, have posted this. Let's see if we can get some of the latest and what's going on with um, U.S. official tells ABC News. I'm seeing it posted all over Twitter. Spectator Index had it. So I think that's uh, who's Joe Trusman, FDD senior anal uh, analyst, senior research analyst says uh, for Palestinian groups. U.S. officials confirm Israel has launched airstrikes on Iran reports ABC News. Uh, I wonder if it was on ABC News TV. All right. Well. Have you bought your safe wow. and ready meals today? Safeandreadymeals.com, the premier, premier location for picking up emergency food. I hope you have some. We yeah, have quite and, a bit. And the feeling you have right now of, oh my God, I didn't get it yet. You still got time. Just make sure you don't ever feel that again. This is, uh, man, I, I don't know what to expect tomorrow. Israel firing, uh, Iran firing on Israel direct territory to territory was shocking. Israel retaliation means this is formal war between Israel and Iran. The U.S., I do not see any circumstance where the U.S. does not get behind Israel. The only hope for the deep state now is that Donald Trump wins, and it is the craziest thing imaginable. Joe Biden's been backing down. He's scared of the progressive left. I'm just imagining deep state guys right now in, in like their deep state office room going. <sighs> we actually want Trump. <laughs> it's Trump. He hates the Ukraine stuff, but he defends Israel. And they're mm -hmm. like, That's you, you saw the CIA reported uh, Ukraine's going to fall this year. Mm. Yup. The Democrats are still obsessed with Ukraine, though. It's like their number one issue. I have to imagine with this. Let me see if I have this. Do I have this uh, scene report? CIA director warns Ukraine could lose war with Russia by the end of the year unless U.S. sends more aid. Okay. <laughs> I, I kind of feel like they're going <laughs> to... Joe Biden is not going to provide Israel with what they need. <clears throat> Trump is way more bullish on supporting Israel. Yeah, Biden acts like he wants to distance himself from Israel yep. and acts like, whoa, hold on, I don't want to get involved, but yet wants to send endless billions of dollars <clears throat> to Ukraine. Well... If this does become World War III, you watched it live on Timcast IRL. <laughs> you know, the crazy thing is, whatever does end up happening, these strikes are historically significant. And it's a weird thought that 100 years from now, they're going to be like, we have an archive, an old <clears throat> podcast that was live during the initial strikes. And here's how these people reacted. And then the kids are going to be watching be like, they're so stupid. Like, why are they acting so, like such morons? They not understand what was going on. It's like, well, people back then were very dumb. <laughs> That's what they're going to say. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, if idiocracy happens, they're going to be like, well, they're so smart. <laughs> I don't understand them. So they're the idiots. Mm. I have a feeling they're going to call us stupid. And they're going to be like, I can't believe they did not realize what they were doing. These people, you know. Us. Us. Yeah, it's going to be like 100 years from now and the kids are going to be their clothes are going to be potato sacks and they're going to be covered in filth and they're going to power the computer to watch the video by riding a bicycle to generate the electricity to turn it on. And there's going to be a guy just like riding like crazy, like I just got to keep it up for like 20 more minutes. And they're going to play the video and they're going to see what the world used to be like before the war destroyed everything. And then there's going to be like, why, how could they have done this to us? You know, or maybe they'll be in space. They'll be on Mars, Fort Elon. And they'll be like, so that's how the earth ended. Suppose we'll see. All right, everybody, if you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member to watch the members only uncensored show that will be coming up in uh, uh, just about 20 minutes. But we are going to read super chats for now, if YouTube actually lets me, and it appears like it is not. YouTube, yay. That's pig Latin. Is pig Latin like a, a racist or derogatory term. I like, <laughs> I like it. Pig Against Latin. pigs? Yeah. Uh, ooh, yay. When you say okay. you, like you put the letter at the end of the word and then yeah, say yeah. a afterwards. I don't know where it comes from. I yeah. think I think we are not going to be able to read Super Chats. Ooh, yay. Did you make it so we can't get Super Chats? Or is it just a glitch in the system? Because I see Super Chats, like this one from DC Stone. 
Well, says, you go ahead. The yeah. Iron Dome failed. Scott Ritter talked about it. Five of seven Iranian missiles hit the most protected airbase in Israel. I saw that interview. That was a really interesting take that Scott Ritter had. I never heard of that guy prior to that, but he is basically arguing that uh, Israel was severely attacked by Iran on, on that airstrike. Really? And he's also arguing that um, the uh, basically Israel is losing the war in the Gaza Strip. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, it made me look him up a little bit. It seems like he's got some pretty um, impressive credentials as an uh, intelligence person. Um, well, but let's. I don't know. I, I was able to get some super chats, but uh, only up to eight twenty-seven. So a lot of them did get erased. Uh, sorry to anybody who did super chat earlier, but we'll read what we can. PBS Design says, "So I have extremely liberal friends and family in SoCal that are openly talking about voting for Trump. Israel, Iran seem to be the defining factor." Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. To think, PPS Design and Build LLC, you super chatted that before the breaking news that Israel had launched airstrikes on Iran, potentially. Uh, I don't want to say starting, but hey, World War Three. here we go. I mean, I, I, I don't know. Maybe World War Three started with October 7th. Todd B says, sorry, I don't think the fear of the jury is Trump. I am more worried, worried the jury sees the evidence or lack of and is more worried about the consequences of finding him not guilty and saying it. Hmm. You mean like the jury will say not guilty and then people will come after them or something? I don't know what you mean. Yeah, that's what I got out of it. Eric Mintz says, for the record, I liked, I like your here to talk about this and much more way better than this and everything else. I like the consistency too. I know you probably felt like you were on repeat, but still, well, it was only like a couple months. I was saying that we just kind of say different things every so often. Okay. I got a good super chat. Talk about this and much more. This one's from CVA Buck. Uh, it says four main radiation, neutron dangerous to DNA shielded by water, uh, gamma penetrating shield by lead, uh, alpha usually airborne contamination risk to internal organs shield by skin and beta usually surface cont shield by clothes i see what you're saying surface contact okay the the, the super chat was truncated okay that's cool yeah, and Good the knowledge. hulk was hit by gamma wave radiation really which triggered a genetic thing or something. so he must have, he should have been wearing lead yeah, that would have protected him, apparently. You know how in like 2016 they were saying like, oh, we're so afraid Trump would have the nuclear codes if he won, like Hillary would say that. Well, now it's very concerning that Biden has the nuclear codes. Yeah. Corto but Maltese, says that anymore. who is whinging and salty about me saying Donald Trump got on his knees for the court, says YouTube said, don't say the CIA agent's name. And Tim got on his knees and muttered, OK, YouTube, please don't take my channel. False. <laughs> Tim ran a full segment on the uh, individual in question named Eric Charamella and YouTube ma masked the video to make it seem like they didn't actually take it down w without telling me. And I only discovered it like months later when I tried to highlight the video and I couldn't. And then what I did was I made several posts on Facebook and every other social media platform saying the guy's name over and over again. One of the posts was this. Uh, I, I wrote a note on an iPhone that said something like ever since the beginning, when uh, real people had discovered blah, blah, blah. And the first letter of every sentence spelled the guy's name out. And then I wrote on Facebook, Eric Charlamella is a 50 year old dentist from Dubuque, Iowa. He has three kids and they deleted that post without warning. Weird. Yeah. Wow. Yep. I missed the boat on that entire thing. That was yeah. weird. What it was a, is There's it a big... worth talking about? Is he was like a whistleblower or something? Uh, he was a CIA uh, uh, analyst or, mm. or official. Uh, not an official, but he worked at the CIA and he was the guy who initiated the impeachment against Donald Trump over Ukraine. And he had direct ties to Democrat lawyers and things like this. There's a big investigation. There's actually another investigation that was just released by Real Clear Politics uh, recently about the guy's name. So, uh, no, my good friend. Uh, in fact, we did not. That being said, after we went through a lot of it, we just said we started, you know, avoiding saying the guy's name for the sake of doing the show. But when... YouTube took down our Alex Jones, Michael Malice episode. I called Alex Jones and Michael Malice and asked them to come back immediately and do it again. Three years later, YouTube deleted that episode. So, uh, yeah, that it's, 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 it's an absurdity. If I was the president and a state judge said, you cannot go to the Supreme Court, I'd say with all due respect, I'm going to the Supreme Court. You make your move. Have a nice day. It's like at a certain point you have to say, I call your bluff, bro. You got to call someone's bluff. What's what's life worth living if you don't play but strategically? I think if Trump doesn't go, that doesn't mean that he's not fighting back against what they're doing. 
I think it means that it was just a strategic decision to not go. I don't know that I agree with that. I believe there is a there is a possibility that, you know, I don't know his legal strategies and what they're looking at numbers wise, so I can respect that. So when someone says, you know, like Trump must or that we had to do something like, no, 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 I, I respect there's a strategy about it. I don't know. I'm just saying it sends a bad message if Trump doesn't go to one of the most important Supreme Court arguments in history because a, a lower court judge told him he wasn't allowed to. I, I think Trump wins tremendously if he gets jailed for politics, doing politics, though, don't even know what's happening. But that's that, I don't know. I don't I don't see that as being material. Is Trump going to defend this country uh, by 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 being at, at SCOTUS and, and sitting in front of these justices as these as the as two branches of government stare each other, st stare each other down? And, and we we see what this country can and will become. Or is Trump going to be like, well, the judge said I'm not allowed. Yeah. And then he'll whine about it. Yeah. And roll over. Yeah, that's what he's going to do. If Trump that's goes to done. SCOTUS yeah. and he gets held in contempt, it will be the biggest power move done by a president in 100 years. If he doesn't go, it looks like he's just saying, I have no choice. I can't. The judge won't let me. So I, I don't know. Look, I, I respect that his lawyers are probably saying, holy crap, they screwed up. We're going to win. But you got You can't go to the SCOTUS thing. It won't fit into our strategy. I'm sure that if I sat down with Trump, he'd say, look, Here's why we're doing what we're doing. I go, ah, oh, I get it. Yeah. Because I don't think he's without a plan. I'm yeah. just saying we've had people message saying like Trump has to go to SCOTUS. Mm. This is crazy that a judge would bar him from doing it. So it, Trump is between a rock and a hard place mm. on that one. I think his big power move that will be winning despite them doing all this to him. So it's I, like. I don't think he's going to win. Why? You think Biden's going to win? Oh, no, no. I mean, I mean the trial. Oh, I mean the election. Yeah. I'm, I'm also not super convinced either. I mean. What are Republicans doing? Uh, look, Republicans don't even know what's going on with the HAVV scandal that's been happening. Let me see if I can pull this up. Major scandal. Have they uh I have just they don't updated? think our country can survive another four years of Biden. Of course. Like, the Help America Vote Verification, since the story broke and Wokeness tweeted it out, and we covered it on the show, it has been 18 days, 19 days, and the Social Security Administration has not updated their HAVV numbers. So we are looking at 225,000 people every two weeks trying to register in Texas for, uh, for a vote with no ID. We are looking at in one week, 23,000 dead people trying to vote. No one's answered it. Texas says it clearly is a mistake. Missouri said, no, 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 we're just trying to clean our voter rolls, which defies the purpose of HAVV, which says it's only for new voters. And now the SSA has stopped publishing the numbers. And the Republicans have no idea what this is. So it's like, look, man, I would be surprised if Texas and Missouri go Democrat. And then but that, Trump. But that would be because of actual, like, operational issues, not because, hey, the table was clear, like, everything was even on both sides. Well, I think it's fair to say in 2020, Trump won the argument, but, but, but Republicans weren't actually playing the game. Republicans were like, an election is when I tell you my plan and you agree with me. And the Democrats were like, an election is when I get a whole bunch of piece of papers with people's names on them. Mm -hmm. And the yep. Democrats went around and ballot harvested, collected as many names and then crossed their fingers. They wouldn't get signature verification. And then their allies and people in these cities said, we don't, it's fine. Lack signature verification dropped from like, what was like 4% to like 0.1%. And they steamrolled through a whole bunch of objectionable or questionable uh, uh, ballot harvested ballots, likely from old folks' homes and other places like that. Republicans don't know what's going on with this. They're not preparing for it. We've been screaming hire Scott Pressler for, for years, and they only have recently announced them. Are they working with him now or did they cancel that? I don't even know. They're not working with him. Right, they canceled it, I guess. Yeah. I, I, I think they, I thought they, they, they changed their minds. Republicans were focused on the campaign and Democrats were focused on the election. What's changed? What are the ballots that are coming in? I, I'm, not, I, I'm not saying that that has changed because the Democrats realized, hey, that worked. So we're going to double down on that, even if we're running a completely comatose person, as long as we get the ballots. But I think, I think we have to fight fire with fire. I mean, we have to do the things that they're doing. We need to be going to old folks' homes. We need I, to right. be... We, but I, we need I, to be I, doing what's legal, but to the extent of the law and, and making I think sure that what, we're collecting them. I think what's likely changed now is, or I should say, there's a strong possibility that in Texas and Missouri, they have begun registering people somehow for some reason, because we have the numbers from the Social Security Administration. Texas and Missouri go Democrat. 
They've been saying for a long time, Texas is turning blue. It's a purple state. Oh, it's, it's really close. So Trump wins all the swing states, like all the polls are saying. Republicans are like, look, Trump's winning the swing states. Then Texas and Missouri flip, and that guarantees Democrats victory. I don't think Texas is going to flip. When you have 1.5 million people who registered to vote with no IDs, I have to I have to question what the shadow campaign is this time that Republicans aren't paying attention to. Well, they need to pay attention. We still have time this year. And so I, I, I would agree with that. But in terms of do I think Trump is going to win, it's a it's a it's a big I don't know. The Social Security Administration stopped publishing the numbers on non no, uh, on people with no IDs registering to vote after the story broke that 1.5 million people since January registered to vote in Texas with no IDs. That thing Texas, needs to be illegal. That's that's totally unacceptable. Sure. Who's doing anything about it? Yes. Any, any, any Republican hearings? Josh Hawley, Gates, anybody filing anything asking about what's going on? I mean, the story's been up now for uh, uh, three weeks. Not, not even a strongly know, worded letter. Republicans are not fighting back on election integrity right now. It's really concerning because I think that that's that's the that's the playing field within which we're all trying to play. So if the field is messed up, like how how are we supposed to be expected to win? And I hate when people say things like, "Well, you just have to win by so much more that it doesn't matter how much they did that mm -hmm. was illegal or shady or stealing or whatever." It's like, no, that's that that's totally ridiculous. That's totally unfair. We can't just cower and allow them to set those kind of playing field so no i mean i think that the american people have to bring that to their state and the states have to fight it out i think all right let's read some more the zach says i got an email this morning from google on their changes to their terms including clarity on abusive activity may be relevant to your youtube issues that's right and so that's why i told the people at google on the phone with them that this is retroactive enforcement you have changed the rules and then gone back and enforced new rules against old videos and they go no these rules were always in place. And I was like, yes, but your editorial decisions were not. They said conspiracy theories are not allowed. And then I said, Ron Paul said that JFK was killed by the CIA. What about that? And they're like, well, that's not a violent conspiracy theory like QAnon. And I said, whether QAnon is violent or not is your editorial decision. You can change at any moment. And they were like, well, yeah, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. YouTube, you're a garbage company. But that's right. All of the clips are available on Rumble. And uh, while I will mention this, I have been speaking with top men. Uh, I don't want to say too much until we figure out the plans, but I have been speaking with top men. And uh, make sure you follow the show at TimCast and uh, TimCast IRL on YouTube. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, on X. And uh, Rumble.com slash TimCast IRL as well. Make sure you subscribe to these platforms. The big challenge for us, though, is that many people watch on TV. They pull up the YouTube app on their TVs to watch. So... Uh, that's a lot of people who are going to have a more, more difficult time finding the show once we, uh, once things change, I'll put it that way. I want to say though, if Trump doesn't go to the Supreme Court, I don't think that just because Trump doesn't do one thing that you want him to do, you shouldn't vote for Trump. Well, I agree. I mean, what you do know? you do, vote for Biden? Well, I just mean, it's like easy to right, nitpick no everything about every single person. Like, why didn't you do every single thing I wanted you to do? Yeah, we don't need perfection you know? right now. We it's just... like, I hope that he goes there, but if he doesn't, I mean... We still have to we still have to vote for Trump. We have to we have to fight back. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, I agree with Triton 54 about Trump bending the knee. I'll still vote for him. But also, I never expected Trump to be the hero people think he is. That's a good point, too. Trump is not this paladin sent from the high heavens. He's not the God Emperor in the golden armor. He is just the best chance we have and has been the whole time. So he's like I can a, respect that. And even Obama in the beginning, in the very beginning, he was ready to let the, we the people, which is the government. We are the government. We don't let some guy do it for us. We are the motivating force of this nation. And Obama was prepared to let us do a revolution. He was going to stand by and allow it to happen. He was he was a revolutionary spirit, but he went in. No one did anything. And then the deep state took him over because he didn't want to die. So like. You can only do so much as this guy is the president. You know, it's we, the people that move together. I want to give a shout out to Rob Akar. I think that's his name. Not telling you to do it. He says, first super chat and shameless plug. Happy belated 20th anniversary to my indie author wife, Jennifer Carr. Find her latest contemporary romance novel, Fall When You Are Ready, where books are sold and connect at J. Carr writes. That's C-A-R-R. -R. Shout out to those who are the t part of the TimCast audience working to build culture. And I try to read your super chats whenever I can. I can't read all of them. But if I see it, I will definitely shout it out because that's how you win a culture war. And you also network with people. Let's go. 
Wyatt Kaldenberg says, as a, per as a person convicted of contempt, it's 30 days per count. It's up to the judge. You can't appeal it. I got 23 counts of contempt of court when I was in jail. It was dropped to one count. Trump will get years for contempt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> we'll see. Maybe. T. Miller says, you forget this trial is rigged. Nothing about this trial is about justice. It's a show trial. If the judge wants to arrest Trump, he'll find a reason. He will find something. So Trump should just go to the Supreme Court. Or that it will be forced to expose them as being full of it. And they'll say, like already the prosecutors have said Trump violated the gag order an additional seven times. And the judge is like, well, you know, we'll deal with that later. The judge might be like, there's only so much I can actually do. Will Chamberlain made a great point about the Supreme Court. He said, uh, it was on the show a long time ago. The Supreme Court is actually very reluctant to make heavy rulings because if they push too hard and people ignore them, it exposes the Supreme Court as having no enforcement authority. If the Supreme Court says you're no longer allowed to do thing and everyone does it anyway, then everyone goes, hey, wait a minute. The Supreme Court couldn't tell us to do anything at all the whole time. They have no authority. They have no authority. They have no enforcement capabilities. You mean those nine people aren't really in control? <laughs> they can say things. And then the assumption is, this is amazing. This is amazing. The Supreme Court says, we hereby agree that you know, law is as such. And then cops go, well, okay, I guess the court said so. What if they didn't? What if they went, I don't care. SCOTUS can do nothing. It literally is just that we agree as a society. If the Supreme Court says so, it is so. I mean, I also think Trump has done so much for us at a certain point. We can't just always look to Trump to be the like white stallion hero. It's like we have to also do things at the state level, at the local level. We have to also do things to make sure that the playing field isn't totally biased. Yeah, yeah, we need transparency in the voting machines for sure. We need the code. Kara Su Macha says Trump needs to go to the Supreme Court and then immediately after announce his VP. That would be an epic move, especially if the judge throws him in jail. His voice would be the center of attention and advocate for Trump. Interesting. I wonder who the VP will be. He apparently asked, oh no, no, that was hearsay Rob, bobby kennedy i don't know if that was true or not samuel somebody reached out to him samuel eddie says conspiracy theory ian is the multi ian is the universe manifest and if he remembers we all die when he wakes up oh okay i'll forget so we're working on a dump button a dump button means there will be like a 10 second delay on the show there there already is like a 30 second delay but that's normally through that's like youtube's latency issues that's a normal thing and so the dump button is if someone says something naughty, instead of just taking the show down, I press a button and then the show basically clips that out. It's the same thing that Fox, MSNBC, CNN, every cable network has. It's a very, it's a, it's more expensive than they do on TV, but they have a seven second delay. So if someone goes on and then starts swearing and, and stuff, they hit a button and then it just deletes that and never broadcasts. The idea we had was like, so what do we show people in that 10 seconds if someone says something insane? So the idea is I press the button. All that does is trigger a video to play where it switches to Ian and you hear his inner inner monologue and the voice of the show become muffled like and then Ian's going, don't say graphene, don't say graphene, don't say graphene. Say graphene. graphene. And then it cuts back to the show just as like a bit. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. I love it. That's no, great. You just keep that censored. Don't do what MSNBC. And well, then the show just gets do. deleted. Yeah, it's a YouTube Aww, because thing. Because of YouTube. Yeah, right. Yep. So the idea is, well, the uh, cable networks have their own restrictions as well. Mm. We actually have, it, it, they're, they're similar, like, we can say more than Fox News can say. Mm. You know, if you were to go on someone's show, um, I can't remember who it was, but there's a handful of people who are banned from Fox News for saying things that aren't even that crazy. We'll just have to make our own second language. That doesn't work either. Or like thieves can't. They just decide to ban you. Because then, then they just figure out what it is. Yeah. Mm. Like, what are you doing making a fist? What does that mean? Well, it's just like, you know, all these different symbols that people do. People I don't have know to meet mean. in person then. Let's see. Mario, really energy. Mario Gretzky says, Bible prophecy, Tim. When no one is left defending Israel, Jesus returns to defend it himself. What well, okay then. Mean, though? It means that the younger generation is either anti-intervention or anti-Israel. So in 40 years, Israel has no support in the United States. Was it about Israel back in the in the Bible? Because Israel, the kingdom of Israel, was not Israel, the country. They just have the same name, but they were different yes, places correct. and different things. Yeah. Yeah, it's different. Okay. 
Pyro, uh, Pyropism says, Tim, when you finally have a kid of your own, if you don't create a slice of life channel on Timcast called Beanie Babies, I'm going to be big sad. <laughs> Beanie Babies. All right. 2300 Gear Jammer says, hey, Tim, the nuclear, the nuclear facilities are in Esfahan, Iran, and we are getting news of explosions in the area. My wife is from Iran and we have family there. Buckle up. Oh, boy. God. Oh, boy. It's going to get crazy. CR says, Ian is delusional. No, no, no. It was a joke. It would just be a video, a fake video of Ian. He'd be wearing different clothes. I think that way. was in response to me talking about Obama being ready to roll with the people. But it's the people have to make the momentum. You cannot rely on a president oh. to do that for you. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. says, Tim, FYI, there's no Timcast IRL on X. What is, what is, what is oh, that? Oh, yeah. Called? I sent that to Surge. I got a note about that from somebody. Thank you for sending me that, by the way, on Twitter or on X, rather. And Surge, you had pointed out maybe. Uh, yeah, in the past, I noticed that the Timcast IRL page itself on X had been uh, removed <laughs> suspended. Or suspended. So I don't wow. know. I don't know if that's like. No, I think someone else had it a long time ago because yeah, yeah, we yeah. never cared. Right. So I, I, I forget. Well, all that really matters is uh, uh, Timcast. And I might be able to put you in touch with the guy who can get the IRL back. That's what the message I got was. He gave me a name for someone to contact. I mean, I suppose I can just ask Twitter. Yeah. Um, but it's at Timcast. If it, you know, I don't want to say too much just right now, but follow at Timcast because uh, that's the main channel where we post things. All right, everybody. If you haven't already, would you kindly smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. And become a member over at TimCast.com because YouTube is giving us the business. We are moving to our new studio. TimCast's new next phase launches officially on Monday. I am so excited for you guys to see how beautiful these cameras look. Everyone, it's, it's crazy. Everyone's going to look like a celebrity. Their skin's going to look so smooth. They're going to look slim. It just... Dang it. As, and of yeah, course, we're going to go on right before you get the new oh, studio. I could use that camera tonight. Yeah. When, when, I, when everyone sees what Ian really looks like, it's he's just so like hot. massively Love ripped. He looks, he's like, I look you know, really good. Six foot five, yeah, not you know, 300 pounds of pure muscle. Awesome. Uh, just wait, wait. Um, but, uh, you know, at the same time, we're getting a business from YouTube. So this show is made possible because we have members at TimCast.com. So go to TimCast.com and sign up. And I'll also shout this out because we normally, we never do stuff like this, but only in like the rarest of occasions safeandreadymeals.com I'm hoping the URL is still up um let me let me double check safeandreadymeals.com and uh no it's not loading for me is it loading for you let's find out well no. if it doesn't all right well then say la vie i guess you can't buy emergency food oh yeah it is it, it just works. takes a while to load okay cool so this is uh emergency food we, i i i don't like doing standard promos for emergency food for one, it's ineffective, but it's also a little like, I don't know, like, uh, you know, they're, but you know, when Israel launches missiles in Iran, it's like, I, I just hope you guys have emergency food and water because you might need it. So, uh, yeah, head over to TimCast.com, follow the show at TimCast and, um, smash the like button. Danielle, do you want to shout anything out? Oh yeah. Um, fine. You can find me on social media. I'm on X. I'm on Rumble. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Danielle D'Souza Gill. Cool. Chris Carr 17 on X. Be sure to check out scanner scnr.com for all of your news junkie needs. Thank you. And I'm going to be on a little vacation next week. Not really. I'm going to be working down in Florida. So I'll be with Luke Rudkowski throughout the week. I think I will actually not be at the grand opening of the studio. So you won't see how good I look until the following week. But uh, keep your eyes open and stay on. And follow me at Ian Crossland in the meantime. Uh, I'm going to be in Austin on April 27th. It's coming up. It's in nine days. <laughs> Go to festival.minds.com and get your tickets. You can use my name, Ian, for a promo code. You can actually use Ashley, because Ashley St. Clair is going to be there for 30% off. It, Mine's only oil, 20%. Oil's already up 4%. Wow. Yep. Mm -hmm. Your the gas prices are fast. going through the roof. Yo, it doesn't matter what the reason is. If oil skyrockets, Trump won. Like, incumbents cannot withstand high gas prices. I anyway. thought you made a good, interesting point out. Trump supports Israel. Biden does not. And the deep state is like, uh-oh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we made the wrong horse. I think, okay. Well, Serge, talk me out, man. Oh, uh, yeah, Danielle, thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Uh, see you. you guys later. We'll see you all over at TimCast.com in a couple of minutes. Thanks for hanging out.